dome woes in the 80s dome teams are only 3 and 12 in outdoor playoff games and to add to the problems for the Vikings they are only 2 and 6 on the road in 1989 Rich Carlos one of the bright acquisitions from Minnesota this year will kick off the deep man Spencer Tillman number 23 and Terrence Flagler number 32 were underway taken by Flagler at the goal line a lot of room. A lot of room. Joey Browner saved the touchdown. A 58-yard kickoff return to open the ball game. Three things the 49ers worked on in the extra week they had off. Scoring. And then kick off and punt returns, and it certainly paid off as Flagger found the seam. Excellent blocking, and now it's just Rich Carlos's job to slow him down. He doesn't, Browner does. First down at the 41. Backs are split, Rice in motion. Three step drop, up pattern, Jerry Rice. Let's check the 49er lineup with Montana at quarterback. NFL record this year, 112.4 quarterback rating. His offensive front, Bubba Paris, number 77, matched against Dolman today. McIntyre, Sapolu, Kali Barton, the tight end is Brent Jones. In the backfield, Craig Rafton, Rice and Taylor, Mike Wilson on passing downs. Hand off Craig. First down at the 30-yard line. Viking defense, Noga, Thomas, Millard, and Dolman, 71 sacks. Leads the league this year. The linebackers. Deuce Bobbick replaces an injured Mike Merriweather, Studwell, and Ray Berry. And in the secondary, Lee and Rutland. Lee's going to Pro Bowl. Brad Edwards replaces Travis Curtis, McMillan, and Fullington on Aubin's passing down. From the 30, first down. Great. running notice Noga goes deep and wide to the outside Craig takes the ball going off left tackle and then cuts back the secret here for the 49ers burn is they want to attack the bubble the, the Vikings will take three down linemen and shift them right or left and that will leave one linebacker by himself on the back side that's the area that the 49ers want to attack with their running game now from the 15 yard line first down and 10 a double tight end set for the 49ers John Taylor goes wide to the left side. Rice comes wide right with Carl Lee. Jones and Wesley Walls, the two tight ends, are tight to the right. And Rathman, the only setback. Five-step drop this time. Montana in the flat. Rice to the nine-yard line. Tackle made by Raymond Berry. Minnesota with the number one defense in the league, but look at inside the 20, Terry. They are 24th in points allowed this year. Well, that's great defense from the goal line to the 20. I mean, once you get down there, that graphic illustrates the fact that they cannot keep people from scoring. Second down and four. Frank back in the lineup. Fumble. Vikings have it. Raymond Berry recovers Roger Craig's fumble. Well, the one thing you don't want to have happen, you don't want to have great special teams put you in great position to go down and get the early score and then to have a miss handoff. That's just a miss handoff with Craig in Montana. I can't tell whether or not Craig had the ball or whether the ball hit him on the elbow. But boy, this is a big, big lift for the Minnesota Vikings. Raymond Berry with a turnover. Vikings ball timeout. The Volvo 240 has built a reputation for surviving accidents. And we at Subaru have always been impressed by that. So we gave the new Subaru Legacy Wagon unibody construction like the Volvo 240. 
But unlike the 240, the Subaru Legacy is available with full-time four-wheel drive and anti-lock brakes. Because the best way to survive an accident is not to get into one. For a bear of a thirst, I reach for it first. I can drink a lot more. And it settles the score. Four fingers number seven to taste the pure heaven. It's the drink of the moon. It's playing Alton. It moves Louie's lip. It shakes Eric's hip. Go look out, Pepsi, the move is on. Now we're singing the Diet Coke song. Diet Coke has real cola taste in just one calorie. So, for the Viking, it turns on the AC. Diet Coke! It's the biggest territory, First Interstate Bank Territory, where First Interstate has offices in more cities and states than any other bank system. So you can move anywhere across the territory and have your bank account waiting. From Hawaii to Wyoming, Arizona to Washington. So open an account at First Interstate and you'll get a warm welcome all across our territory. First Interstate Bank, we go the extra mile for you. Minnesota Viking first down at their own eight-yard line following the Ray Berry fumble recovery. Wade Wilson, the quarterback, back split. Rick Penny starts in motion, number 31. Bobble on the snap there. Wilson will run. And is hauled down from behind out near the 18-yard line by Pete Tupler, who is starting a nose tackle. Wilson, an erratic year. He was out for a while with a broken finger. Nine touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Joined in the backfield by or a pro brother Zimmerman McDaniels going to the Pro Bowl louder milk Kalis Tim Irwin and the tight end Steve Jordan in the backfield Herschel Walker and Rick Fenney Anthony Carter at one wide out Hassan Jones at the other Leo Lewis Jim Gustafson come in on obvious passing downs about a foot short you know right off the bat you saw the play action by the Vikings Wilson flashing right rolling to his left with a guard pulling to protect him and one of the things that that they want to get from Wilson today that normally don't they want him to run with the football the one dimension he adds to the Viking offense is his ability to run and if he can get out and run get outside and run with the football then he can create a lot of problems and a lot of adjustments have to be made by the 49ers to stop him from running the second down and short as you look at Bob Schnelker Leo Lewis has joined the lineup second and one officially Benny in motion again. Walker. First down at the 22-yard line. 49er defense, not a bad lot at all. They've had some injuries now. Pierce Holt has replaced Larry Roberts at the end spot. Pete Kugler starts today for Jim Burt, Michael Carter on injured reserve. Linebackers are Haley, Matt Millen, Michael Walter, and Keena Turner. And in the secondary. Daryl Pollard, Don Griffin, Ronnie Lott, and Chet Brooks. Wright and McTire on nickel and dime situations. First and ten, Minnesota, no score. And Herschel Walker, the deep back in the eye, which is his formation. Gets the toss and comes left. And boy, you can hear the pop at the 25-yard line as Don Griffin collided with Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker is doing his best running burn when he's running between the tackles when he takes the ball deep in the eye and is able to move right on the right tackle or the left tackle but the defense wins when they can force Walker not to go off tackle but to change his direction and then notice how he had to go outside when he goes outside he is not a good runner going to the outside allows the defenses to get up and he loses his power second down seven from the 25 opening moments of the game 49ers fumble at the eight. And Wilson with a deep drop of seven yards into the flat caught by Anthony Carter. Out to the 39-yard line. Anthony Carter said yesterday, they've got to get me involved early. Cart Carter will go down. One of the things that he says that I have to do today, notice how tight Pollard is up on Carter. Wants to get his hands on him. Can't do that, so now he just mirrors and runs side by side. Carter comes up, plants sees Wilson, feels the pressure of Pollard, and then goes away from Pollard. That's a gain of 14. It was two years ago here that Anthony Carter caught 10 balls for 227 yards as the Vikings routed the 49ers. Last year in the playoff game here, he was held to three catches for 45. First and 10, flag down.
Tom Dooley is our referee today. Ball start, 76 offense. First down. Tim Irwin, ball start. That'll cost the Vikings five as Tim Irwin is called for the infraction. Offensive penalties for the Vikings so far this year. Look at the false starts. That's the fourth on Irwin, actually the fifth as we updated. Loudermilk in the center and not unexpected for a holding call to come from the center. Splitbacks after the five-yard penalty. Four-man rush by the 49ers. Wilson across the middle to his tight end, Steve Jordan. Final score in the AFC Divisional Playoff game, and it was a dandy. Cleveland defeats Buffalo 34-30. And welcome to those of you who've been watching that game. Vern Lundquist, Terry Bradshaw here at Candlestick Park. We have no score. 58-yard kickoff return to open the game by Terrence Flagler, and the 49ers were driving, but Roger Craig fumbled at the eight. Ray Berry recovered, and Minnesota has moved out now to its own 38-yard line. Double tight end set for Minnesota. Fake the draw. Wilson with time. Nice pass. Beautiful pass to Jordan at the 49er, 44-yard line. That is a gain of 19 and a first down. The real secret to throw into a tight end is he must have someone out in the flat to pull up the linebackers. Counteraction kind of freezes the linebackers. Now, when Wilson is out wide, now Jordan will come in behind the linebackers. They come up, Turner comes up to cover the back. That opened up a huge hole behind him to allow Wilson to get the ball to Jordan. Steve Jordan again in the Pro Bowl this year, bothered with an injury at the start of the year. He and Carter were both hurt for much of the season. Now, Novoselsky is in and goes way wide to the right. Impressive Minnesota drive. Heard Terry say at the top of the show they needed this. Here's Walker on the fake. Turns the corner and is banged out of bounds by Chet Brooks. The 11th round draft choice in his second year who has replaced Jeff Fuller at strong safety. One of the ways that Wilson will, one of the major differences, Vern, in Wilson's attacking style and Montana's who watches as the game goes is that Wilson will, well, he will go ahead and push an offense, his offense down the field. He will throw the ball 15, 20 yards and deep post and corners. Montana throws a little short four and five yards. He will not push an, his push his offense. Second down and six. Opening drive of the game for Minnesota. No score in the ball game. Out of the eye, the toss to Walker gets a good block from Gary Zimmerman and comes down to the 33-yard line. Chet Brooks with the tackle, but Zimmerman a terrific block to give Walker time to get around the corner. You can't get outside. You can't seal off the inside. And Zimmerman, the left tackle, notice how he gets out, gets his hands up inside the framework of Turner, now gets position, holds him to the inside. If you seal off the inside, then that allows the back to go to the outside. The only problem I see with throwing the ball to Walker like that, even if you're running the football, you can't do play action off of a toss. So it's very difficult to do play action. If Walker's successful running with tosses, that really eliminates all play action. Well, the Vikings get the first down. Zimmerman's block and Walker's run. Walker with 17 yards now had that explosive start against Green Bay after the trade. And he has, uh, his results have diminished each week. Look at weeks 13 through 16, an average of 38 yards per game on 13 carries. And he's off to a good start today. Play fake, Wilson. He'll run. Down to the 25-yard line. Well, I think a lot of people expected the Vikings to come in here and go ahead and play this game, but the 49ers are going to go ahead and win it. Everyone pretty much had conceded this game to the 49ers. But in talking to the Vikings, I told you, yeah, boy, these guys are really wired. I've never seen a team so up for a football game. They are today. This drive, man, is very important, doing a heck of a job. Well, Jerry Burns was as tight as we have seen him. And this is the fourth game we He was uh, <laughs> a violin string. Second down and one. Leo Lewis is the motion man. Rick Penny, the fullback, to the 22-yard line. That was Jerry Burns, so superstitious that 
the last what four times they've uh, come out here they've come out early this they've lost so he said this time we're staying home and working in the cold now it drives his players crazy because if they win a game by doing something weird they're going to continue doing it till it's broken but you're right Vern. the four times they've they left Minneapolis to go out and, and go somewhere else to get ready for a playoff game. They've lost all those games. He said, the heck with that garbage. We're going to stay here and, and practice in the cold weather. This drive began at the Minnesota eight-yard line. First down and ten. No score in the game. Walker, nothing. That's really the first time in this drive that the 49ers have stuffed Minnesota. And it's Charles Haley, number 94, who makes the tackle. Haley will come in from his outside. He'll play standing up. He's actually an in, and he plays down. Notice how Haley down, 94, gets down in a three-point stance and then penetrates to the inside. If you run off tackle, you can't allow penetration from anyone from the outside. If they get inside of the blocker, they knock the play down. Almost six minutes gone in this drive. And a second down and 10. Hassan Jones starts in motion. Rick Finney. Whoa. That one's knocked backwards by Pete Kugler, the nose tackle. Yeah, Pete Kugler just jumped right around the center that time. Loudermilk beat him to the gun. He actually knew the snap count. So if I were if I were Wade Wilson, I would say, okay, hey, you know my snap count. That's great. I'd go back in the huddle and I'd say, disregard this thing, disregard the all. I'd go in a longer count, and I'd catch old Pete Kugler going offside. Long drive by Minnesota. This will be the 13th play in this drive, and they shoot up. Over six minutes. Alfred Anderson comes in now, and Wilson will go out of the shotgun on third and nine. Into the flat, low, incomplete. It'll be fourth down, and Rich Carlos will come on. That was the first blitz of any kind we've seen. Chet Brooks, 31, lined up to Wade Wilson's blind side to the left over the slot, and when the ball was snapped, he came off like a bullet. Wilson, since this, had his blitz control, threw it too low, but that's the first time we've seen the 49ers attempt any type of blitz. Carlos, of course, signed a free agent contract. He was with Denver for years and years, and he has signed only a one-year contract with Minnesota. He's 31 of 39 this year. That is a club record. He's now 32 of 40. Had the lead like last year at three to nothing. Had the lead the year before three to nothing. Important for the Vikings to get the early lead. They feel like if they have the lead, that gives them the advantage. Their confidence gets high, and they feel like they can win this game. Here's Carlos to kick off. Short right side, Spencer Tillman at the 12. And he breaks the tackle, gets it out to the 28-yard line. And right after the game, or right after the uh, field goal, Matt Millen, the former Raider who was picked up in the middle of the season, went over to the sideline. Looks like Terry, he's got a, got a back spasm. Yeah, because I, I get back spasms. That's one of the exercises I do right there. You lay down and you, you flex your, your uh, hips and pull your head up. But, they're painful, and if you get a back spasm like that, it just ties up your whole body. 49ers second possession. They got as far as the Minnesota eight before Craig fumbled. of it on Jerry Rice's run. Montana with about a four-yard pass. And one of the officials was hit from the blind side during the touchdown run by Jerry Rice. Well, while they attended to the officials, Vern, the key in this game that the Vikings wanted to do, they said they want to they want to press the wide receivers, stay close on them, so that when they catch the short pass, We'll be right in position to make the tackle. Now you see Carl Lee is in a trailing position. Rice senses the blitz. He stops. Lee slides by him. There's no one near Rice. Now at the speed, he is gone. 17 touchdowns in the regular season on 82 catches. This 72 yards. Jerry Rice. 
puts the 49ers on top. And that was the first gamble that the Vikings have done today when they sent Joey Browner the strong safety. He came on a safety blitz. Montana read it. Rice was going to the inside. Stop. Made the catch. No one there to block him. No one there to tackle him. The injured official is the field judge, Pat Mallett. He is being escorted to the sidelines. And in playoff games, there is an alternate to sign. Don Dorkowski is the alternate. So Dorkowski will take the spot of the field judge. Now Michael Kofer out of Barry Hilton's hold. A 72-yard run. Floyd Peters told us yesterday tackling is so important in this game. Floyd Peters, the defensive coordinator of Minnesota. Just like that, Floyd Peters' team has fallen behind. It's 7 to 3, 49ers. Of all the Subarus registered since 1979, 93% are still on the road which could mean the new Subaru Loyale will still be good on a hill when other cars are over it. It weighs one millionth of an ounce, yet it can take a 2,000 pound car and blow it right off the road. That's why you should drive the new four-wheel drive Subaru Legacy. Think of it as a five-passenger snowmobile. All right now. Here's some tunes that have meant a lot to us over the years. Remember when you'd want a great, tasty McDonald's Big Mac? You said to your mama, well, you deserve a break today. And when you saw your lady eating a beefy quarter pounder with cheese, you'd say, you, whoa, you, you're the one. And then you'd love it when she'd say, together, McDonald's and you. Now we're in the 90s with McDLT to love singing. The good times, great taste. Yeah. To go first quarter, a 72-yard pass and run. Montana to Jerry Rice, and most of it was run. That's typical of this 49er bunch. And there's the alternate official, Don Dorkowski. Word from the field is that Pat Mallett, the field judge, separated a uh, left shoulder and will be out for the remainder of the day. There's Pat Mallett on the sideline. Hit from the blind side as he was uh, the training official on the touchdown run. Now, Cooper will kick off 7-3. 4.58 to go, first quarter. And Herschel Walker, who has one touchdown return for, or one kickoff return for a touchdown this year, is back at the two-yard line. 93-yard kickoff return came against Philadelphia. Walker from the seven. Down at the 24. And Wesley Walls puts the stop to Walker after a 17-yard kickoff return. Let's look once again at this combination, Montana to Jerry Rice. Well, coming into this game, the Vikings said, we have to play their receivers tight. We have to be on top of them, keep a hand on them, because they make short catches, and then if you're not close to them, they have the ability to run away from you, make a move, and break tackles, and then they go all the way. That was a four-yard pass. That time you saw Crowley, he was not anywhere near Rice. Easy touchdown. And Deuce Bobbick also missed the tackle. It's first down and 10. Look at the formation now by Minnesota. That's Steve Jordan. The toss goes to Walker with Finney in front. Walker breaks one tackle, but Chet Brooks comes up and makes sure he doesn't get any more yardage. See, there's an old theory in football, Vern, that the worst place to run against a team that has three down linemen and four linebackers is wide. Normally, you have... You want to run at the two inside linebackers. You want to go up the middle. But right now, what the Vikings are doing is every time that the 49ers get down with Charles Haley and make four down linemen, now they're going pitching it wide to Walker. Second down. Back split. Jim Burt now in a nose tackle, number 64. The former Giant into the flat for Walker. He's got a little bit of room. And that's a first down, Minnesota, at the 36-yard line. Darrell Pollard, number 26, makes the tackle. Let's bring you up to date on what we've had uh, happen here. Rich Carlos tagged a seven-minute drive with a 38-yard field goal to put Minnesota up on top. And then right after the kickoff, a 72-yard pass and run. Montana to Jerry Rice made it a 7-3 to three game, and that's where we are right now. Yeah, what little momentum the Vikings had with their great opening drive was answered uh, and kind of taken away from him by the touchdown pass to Rice from Montana. Double tight end set now on first and 10. 3.20 to go, first quarter. 
Nova Selsky in motion. Wilson looks for the screen pass. Rick Finney. And he is jolted out of bounds. And guess who? Ronnie Lott. Ronnie Lott, all pro at left corner, was moved to safety primarily because at cornerback he committed. He was so aggressive that he caused a lot of touchdown passes. By putting him at safety now, he can read. Top left of your screen, 42, is Ronnie Lott. They put him at safety. Now he has a chance to be involved in all the passing plays because he reads the quarterback and goes with his eyes. Coming up from free safety, you see the great aggressive attitude that, that Lott has. Second down and four. That's Hassan Jones in motion. Walker again, getting a ton of work here early. And that's short of the first down. It'll be third and one. As Matt Millen back in the lineup, number 54. He's always been one of your favorites, hasn't he? Millen. Well, it's amazing. You know, Matt Millen, when he was with the Raiders, was, was uh, predominantly an all-pro player. And even last year, he made the Pro Bowl and then was released by the Oakland Raiders. I mean, Oakland Raiders. The... Uh, LA Raiders. LA Raiders and then picked up by the 49ers. Third and one, seven to three, 49ers lead. Final two minutes and 30 seconds of the first quarter. Walker. That's going to be very close. Louder milk blocking. Todd Kalis and Randall McDaniel, the second year guards. George Seifert looks on. And they'll bring the chain out. You know, one of the, you know, Vern, it's funny, but the, the really, the, the heart and soul of the Vikings offensively has always been their passing attack. But when Walker came in, he kind of disrupted that because so much effort was put into the running game trying to bring the running back to the Vikings. When in effect, the best thing they do is throw the football. This is short, I believe. Fourth down from the 46. And Jerry Burns won't play around. He's going to send the punting unit off. And that gets a roar out of this 49er sellout crowd in San Francisco. John Taylor goes back. And Bucky Scribner is on the punt, the left-footed punter. Taylor, fifth in the National Football League. A long return of 67 yards. Scribner with a modest average of just under 40 yards per punt this year. Not terribly long. Fair catch, Taylor at the 25-yard line. A 30-yard punt, Taylor with a fair catch. 49ers have a lead of 7-3, and the football. It's strange, I can't pick up anything. Still, huh? Filtered, never heat pasteurized, Miller Genuine Draft. For those who've discovered its real draft taste, the world is a very cool place. <laughs> At 7 p.m., how much does it cost to have Grandma hear her grandson's first words? With MCI's new prime time, this 25-minute call from Boston to Philadelphia costs 26% less. MCI's new prime time. Sign up now. It's Sears National Fitness Month, so hurry to Sears. Our Lifestyler Air Cycle with three pre-programmed exercise routines is just $179.83. And our buying power means you'll find much, much more. All at Sears now. The Volvo 240 has built a reputation for surviving accidents. And we at Subaru have always been impressed by that. So we gave the new Subaru Legacy Wagon unibody construction, like the Volvo 240. But unlike the 240, the Subaru Legacy is available with full-time four-wheel drive and anti-lock brakes. Because the best way to survive an accident is not to get into one. Mike Holmgren in the uh, picture. He is the offensive coordinator of the 49ers. He calls all the plays, and uh, he and the defensive coordinator, Bill McPherson, both spend their time in the uh, press box upstairs. Now, Holgren will call the plays and relay them to the coach, George Seifert, who then 
relays them to Steve, Steve Young, Young, who, who then, then flashes them into Joe Montana. <laughs> Somewhere the system sometimes might break down. It doesn't very often. Though. That's Wesley Walls in motion. Three-step drop again, slant pattern, and the catch made. Carl Lee with a tackle of Jerry Rice. A gain of 12. That was a quick slam, but notice how tight this time Carl Lee was was on Rice. I mean, he was extremely close. That was just a great throw. Montana kept the ball low, and then Rice made the grab. Look at Lee. Squares up on him, and now the drive, but now notice how he gets right on top of Jerry Rice. Make first thing, fine, go ahead, catch it. I don't mind that. I'm going to tackle him. First down and 10, 7 to 3, San Francisco leads it. Roger Craig. That's a good block from Bubba Paris on Goldman, and he's got some room. Bubba Paris got a big block on Chris Goldman. And Roger Craig got a huge run of 30 yards. Well, I'm going to say it again. If you're going to run, if you're going to run to the outside, if you run to the weak side, if you run to the tackle side, then you have to have that tackle seal down to the inside. Bubba Paris, number 77, notice he gets his hands up and then fights and pushes and finally stalemates that time Dolman, allowing just enough for Craig to get out wide. That was from a reverse angle, of course. It's first down and 10. Craig in motion. Three-step drop again, Montana. Raffman, who caught 73 in the regular season, goes down near the ankles and makes a fine grab of Montana's pass. Down inside. If Montana has to pull the football down, that's going to give the defensive line enough time to get to Montana, but it's going to put a lot of pressure on his offensive line. But look at Polly, look at Zafo, look how hard they're fighting to keep those guys out of there allowing Montana enough time to throw the ball. End of one. And this team in quest of its fourth Super Bowl of the decade has a lead of 7-3. to three. Back at Minnesota Vikings, a 7-3 to three count right now. 72-yard touchdown pass, Montana to Jerry Rice after Rich Carlos had kicked a 38-yard field goal. And now the 49ers have a second down and seven at the Minnesota 30, following Roger Craig's 30-yard run. Montana, five for five for 102 yards. And off Rackman. And the big fullback bangs down to the 26-yard line where Chris Dolman makes the tackle. Substitution in the offensive line now. Steve Wallace has replaced Bubba Paris at left tackle. They do this by quarter, and he's going against Dolman, Terry. Now, Wallace down inside. They'll swap off. Paris and Wallace are going to swap off all day blocking Chris Dolman. One of the things they said that Paris said, he said, we're going to go after Wallace, after Dolman. We're going to attack him. We're going to wear him out, beat him up. And then when he gets tired, I'm going to raise my hand, and I'm going to bring in Wallace, and he's going to finish him off. Brand new player just activated in the lineup for the 49ers now. Mike Sherrard, number 88 who was just activated yesterday, last played in a regular season game December 21st, 1986. Two broken legs, but time has been called. I know they're beautiful. But think how much Dad will love these. Honey, they're just too much. Mom, Rookie mm -hmm. season then broke his leg the following summer, rebroke it a year later, so he has not played now nearly through more than three years. Signed as a Plan B acquisition off the Cowboy roster and has been working out. Now, Terry, we were told if he's in the lineup, they've got plays designed yeah, Mike, for him. Mike Hogan, the offensive coordinator for the 49ers, has five plays for Mike Sherrod. And the key, he said, is looking at Montana and convincing Joe, look, he's going to be open. Throw it to him. We've got to see whether or not this guy can catch. But Sherrod should be out. He should be by himself, and he will be the key man. That's exactly what they do. They line him up way wide right. Rice and Taylor are split to the left. There's the pass in the flat. Keith Henderson as Sherrard went deep and opened the way for Henderson to make the grab, a gain of 15. Joey Browner makes the tackle. Pressure from the outside on your right. As you see Henderson in motion, he'll go out in the flat. Sherrard will come in behind him. It's almost a built-in pick. Notice Sherrard at top. He brings his man inside. 
Browner has his man man for man gets in a trail position good job by Montana third round draft choice makes the catch rice to the right Taylor to the left Brent Jones in motion Gray coming left Scott Studwell forces him inside after Wallace had put a pretty good block on Chris Dolman 49ers with a number one offense you might expect them to be more than adequate inside the 20 and particularly in the last eight games yeah you can know, look at the look at the touchdowns it's a it's amazing but a, a number one offense you would expect to be able to move the ball inside the 20 Montana said we push the ball in the end zone when we're inside the 20 second and goal seven to three to 49 Brent Jones and they look for all the world like Joe Montana to Dwight Clark in 1982 too much time Brent Jones down inside on a crossing round Montana gets pressure look at Jones look for him he's actually looking for Montana to pop him with the ball now Montana getting outside looks once looks twice and then picks up Jones again in the back side of the end zone lays the ball in an excellent throw by Montana beautiful route by Jones Brent Jones with an eight yard touchdown reception Cooper with the extra point on the day of the catch by Clark that beat the Dallas Cowboys, Brent Jones was at home in Santa Clara watching on television. And he was heartbroken. He was a big Cowboy fan. And now he's on the receiving end of an eight-yard toss from Joe Montana, and that gives the 49ers a 14-3 lead. San Francisco a 14-3 lead was a baseball player in high school turned down a baseball scholarship to Southern California to go to Santa Clara where he could play both sports. Here's Michael Cofer to kick off. Alfred Anderson at the goal line. There's a Walker. Thank you, pardon. Johnny Jackson with the tackle. Watch this reverse angle now of Brent Jones' catch. Notice Jones on the left of your screen, 84. He releases inside and turns his head to Montana to see if Joe's going to pop him with a ball. He does not, so then Jones turns around, escape receiver, and gets a touchdown pass for his efforts. Boy, it was eerie. You might have replaced Henry Thomas with two tall <laughs> Jones chasing Montana over there in the corner. Same spike, too. Yep. DJ Dozier in the lineup for the Vikings. They're now down 14-3. Wilson, slant batter, Hassan Jones, belted. The ball was down by contact, so there is no fumble. And Chet Brooks with another big hit. Pollard coming into this game said, I have to work on my technique. I have to work on my feet, my positioning. Very important. Notice, notice how he sneaks up. That's Pollard, the left corner. Gets up, gets square, and when he gets square like that, he got beat to the inside. He had that little hop, and while he had the hop, then Hassan Jones had to go. Automatically, Pollard was beaten. Good technique. It just didn't work. Gain of 11. First down and 10. Vikings, 14 to 3. They trail. DJ Dozier. Randall McDaniel tries to clear out the uh, left side, and the stop is made by Larry Roberts, who's replaced Pierce Holt now for the second quarter at left defensive end. Minnesota, Terry said they needed an impressive opening drive. They got that, but their defense has fallen down twice now. A 72-yard touchdown pass to Jerry Rice, and then the uh, drive highlighted by Roger yeah, Craig's it run. Could, it could be worse, Vern, if uh, Craig hadn't a fumble on the opening drive. Second down. Blitz. Wilson behind Whoa. the intended receiver, Anthony Carter. Now, one of the things Jerry Burns wants from Wade Wilson today is his concentration level. He wants him to be able to make the right decisions. He said the difference between my quarterbacks and Montana, he says, that guy over there, Montana, he makes the right decisions. My guys sometimes do, sometimes don't. That time, Wilson made a wrong decision. He had a man right in front of him to get the ball to. Would have been easily a first down, but instead threw the ball to the outside, and it was incomplete. Third and ten, three wide receiver offense. Louder milk over the ball, and they will not go from the spread. Four-man rush. 
Wilson. Almost picked off. Tim McKayer was in defensively. It'll be fourth down. McKayer, who was suspended for a couple of games early in the season. And the 49ers have held again. You know, Vern, that was a crucial situation for the Vikings. Very important that they move the ball, control the ball, and score because this, this 49er offense has not been slowed down. And if they score now, it's 21 to 3. And man, this thing could be over like real quick. Scribner. Fair catch. Taylor at the 34. Montana has hit Brent Jones and Jerry Rice with touchdown passes. Bernsey's team trails 14 to 3. It's Tuesday afternoon in Ford County. Darn the thing about life here in Ford County. You'd think with a name like Ford County, people would prefer Ford trucks. Au contraire, people from Ford prefer Chevy trucks. All we said we were on the cutting. Candlestick Park in San Francisco, where the 49ers with a 14-2 regular season record, best in the NFL, have jumped out to a 14-3 lead. Montana with two touchdown passes thus far. And Terry, that quick passing game has really uh, stymied Minnesota's defense. Well, the thing that Keith Millard told us, he said the, the, the teams that beat us with their passing attack are teams that have a three-step drop. One, two, three, boom, get rid of the football. And then that's called rhythmic passing. That's what Montana does so well. And so far, the Vikings have not been able to put any pressure on Montana. First down and 10. Roger Trey goes right, slips a tackle. Starts out across the 45 with a first down. Carl Lee makes the stop. Now, what a great job. Great job that time by Bruce Colley, the right guard, and Harris Barton, the right tackle. They just smothered the entire Viking defensive line, got them down inside, man, and allowed Craig plenty of room to the outside. This is Millard. Look what he's going through. There's Guy McIntyre, number one. Get him. Steve Wallace is cutting his legs. McIntyre, a little help, a little punch. And then to the outside goes Roger Craig. And Roger Craig with 61 yards on six carries here in the first half. That's Craig out of the backfield. Montana, three-step drop, pumps and goes deep. Adjusted by Taylor, makes the catch. Reggie Rutland and Brad Edwards defending, but no hope. Motion by Craig. Play action. McIntyre inside to follow the center, giving time for Montana. Holding down the pocket inside. There's a pump by Montana, and then lays the ball up for Taylor. Taylor is a punt returner. He is used to going up and grabbing the football and then coming down. He is used to making these kind of catches. One thing the Vikings misunderstood, they said Taylor was not a leaper. Boy, did a heck of a job that time. How good has Montana been so far? Perfect. Craig. gets out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Man. No running back has run for more than 100 yards against the Vikings all year. Hey, when you have a big game like this, you, your great players seem to elevate their playing ability. It, they seem to all of a sudden get a little faster, make a greater catch, throw a perfect spiral. Roger Craig, all of a sudden, man, he's coming out and showing the speed to go to the outside that, for the most part, people have been questioning all year long with a non- he had lost his speed, but man, he looks like he's possessed, having a heck of a first half. Final score, Cleveland over Buffalo, 34-30. They meet the winner of Denver-Pittsburgh. Roger Craig goes right. Montana with a lot of time in the middle, caught. Fumble in the end zone, it's an incomplete pass. Incomplete pass picked up by Joey Browner after Rice seemingly had it. One thing the safeties for the Vikings cannot afford to do, they must stay in the middle of the football field because on every pass route, one of the 49er receivers will be running to the post. That time it's Rice running to the post. Travis Curtis, 49, the free safety. He gets late behind Rice. Rice dropped the ball. But if you don't protect the middle against these 49ers, someone will be running right by you down the middle. Travis Curtis heads out. The prevent defense comes in. It's third down. And a four wide receiver set now. Sherrard is back in the lineup for the 49ers. Third and six. Across the middle. First down. 
Keith Henderson makes his second grab of the ball game. Henry Thomas with the tackle. Anytime you have safety blitzes, when you have a safety blitz, Browner will come in here. Here's the area that is vacated. Notice that area will be open. Darrell Fullington, 29, he's going deep. There's no way he can get over and stop this pass. Good job by Henderson. Beautiful read by Montana. You blitz, they know exactly where to go with the football. First and 10 at the 11. The 49ers already up 14 to 3. Won't be a blitz this time. Motion left side. Handoff to Craig. Hit behind the line to drop. And a flag comes down. That looked like that time Millard may have jumped off sides. And one of the things Montana wanted to do, whoops, looks like holding. Well, go back to that point. One of the things that Montana wants to do against Millard. Holding 62 offense, first down. Do against Millard is that Millard is so quick when he sees the ball move. Montana said, I have to illustrate my cadence. I have to change it up. And the other thing, I'm going to bend my knees. And when I just flex my knees a little bit, he'll jump off sides. Joe said last year in this playoff game, he got him off sides once by simply moving his left foot. <laughs> and Millard is so cat quick, he came flying across the line. So something to look for if it uh, becomes a critical factor well, in the I game. Hey, hey, that concentration, you wiggle your toes and they go flying off. First down and 10. First and 20, rather, at the 21. Blitz coming this time. Montana into the flat. Grant Jones. And Joey Browner makes the tackle. When you have four down linemen, when you have four down linemen and one linebacker blitzes, that is a blitz control for this man right here. He sees him coming, he goes to the outside. And four down linemen and three linebackers, if any one of them come, it's a blitz. Notice everyone inside. Montana says, I'm going outside. The corners are way off. Get my man Brent Jones the ball. Let him get down and get me close to the end zone. Officially second down and nine at the 10. Montana is 10 of 11. Left side, incomplete. Rice went to the post. Good coverage. You know, one of the things, Montana, the reason motion offense works so well for Montana, he does not have a strong arm. And in this area, Vern, inside the 10-yard line into the end zone, you're very limited, and a quarterback must have a strong arm or a very complicated offense with lots of motion to cause people to make mistakes. And when you have a quarterback like Montana, who makes great decisions, you make a mistake, then he gets you. Interesting, Mike Holmgren said yesterday in a conversation with us, in this system, your quarterback has to be smart, he has to make great decisions, he has to show courage, and he has to have some physical skill. Well, obviously, Joe Montana has adequate surprise of everything. Here's Montana, pumps once, he'll run. Then throw, touchdown! Flag is down. I believe they're going to catch Montana for going across the line of scrimmage. I believe he crossed it and then threw the football, Vern. Line judge made the call. That's it, Terry. So bring up the touchdown. Yeah, what happened to Joe was Joe took off running. He saw the hole in there. He took off running, and then all of a sudden... An illegal pass, number 16 offense, lost it down, fourth down. Then he saw his receiver come open, and he was caught in a catch-22. Do I run? Do I throw? He said, I'm going to throw it. It was Jerry Rice who made the catch. Here's a reverse angle, Jerry. There's the line of scrimmage. All the ass. There, his right leg's across. Oh, gee, his whole body's across. Well, anyway, it, it's a nice pass. It's a good effort by Joe. Unfortunately, it's going to be brought back, and 49ers are going to have to go for a field goal. That is loss of down. So now Michael Cooper who led the league in points scored this year, will try a 32-yard field goal. Barry Hilton's hold, high snap. No good. Oh, no good. So the touchdown pass to Rice is negated, and then the field goal is missed, and the Vikings cling to hope. Yeah. Eight minutes and two seconds remaining in the first half. It has been all San Francisco thus far.
a century of incredible change. Merrill Lynch believes it will culminate in a decade of extraordinary opportunity. And our insight can help... Pictures of Candlestick Park in San Francisco coming from the Goodyear Blimp Columbia, based in Carson, California. The pilot is Charles Russell and the home base for the Blimp down in California. First down and 10, Vikings leading, or trailing rather, play action pass. Wilson back a lot of time, but great downfield coverage. Now goes deep and is picked off. Chet Brooks. Anthony Carter was one of the men deep. Watch Carter. Just lo notice Carter's head moving, looking, finding out where the backs are, and now he's adjusting by going in behind the safeties. Hassan Jones coming back to the inside. Too much time, too long. Just should not have thrown that football at all. 28 on the return. The handoff right to Craig. That's a gain of 12 more, and Craig has 77 yards. One of the major changes, Vern, this year in the blocking scheme of the 49ers has been the pulling of the guards and the trap blocking, very much like the Steelers. They've gotten away from going wide as much and have now pulling their guards and trapping up the middle. That last time was a beautiful job of that. And Minnesota is a team susceptible to traps. Exactly, exactly. First down and goal from the nine. Rathman. That is Curtis up on top and Studwell down below. Rathman, a, a running back that's ambidextrous, broke his right arm as a young man and, and now plays both halfback and fullback, can play either side and run right or left because of a broken right arm. He learned how to become left-handed, but he's such a threat. 73 receptions this year as a receiver from the fullback position, which is unheard of. And then you look at what Craig has done from the halfback with 50, and then the two wide receivers with 70 and 80. And man, you're talking about five people. And who in the world do you double team? Second down and goal from the eight. John Taylor. country music friend named Jerry Reed and he wrote a song and it was the number one hit and it's called when you're hot you're hot and I'm telling you right now these guys are hot throw it they catch it run outside they catch it everything works man when you have, when it's in the stars it just happens beautiful job by Montana great effort by Taylor to catch the pass Gophers kick no good so he has missed a field goal and an extra point. And that has been the only disappointment for the 49ers thus far. Is this scary? Isn't this just a little bit eerie? You're watching this and you're seeing a machine. This offense is an absolute machine. And that guy is pulling it off today. It's just really, I'm amazed at it. And I'm impressed with it tremendously. Joe Montana, three touchdowns. Look at it from the reverse angle. Might get seven today. Millard inside, there's the pull. That's a misread. Guard goes left. The tackles read that and go with him. That allows Montana the chance to get outside. He runs well on the run as well as anyone in the National Football League in high school at Ringo in Pennsylvania, then at Notre Dame. He was an excellent running quarterback and learned how to throw on the run, but, well, what a job by those guys. Well, Taylor and Montana have hooked up for a touchdown toss to make it 20 to 3 here, and there's more coming up tomorrow. Back at Giant Stadium in East Rutherford, the Los Angeles Rams, winners of the wild card last week in Philadelphia, take on the New York Giants. Hey, when you're hot, you're hot. Those Rams were hot last week in Philadelphia. A lot of people expected the uh, Eagles to win that game, but Jim Everett and Flipper Anderson and Ellard and those guys, uh, Bell, uh, well, they put on a show. It ought to be a heck of a game tomorrow. 
Now a new wrinkle for the Minnesota Vikings. Anthony Carter is back to return the kickoff. This will be, if it is returned, only the second kickoff return of his career. It won't be. It's short. And it's taken by D.J. Dozer, who probably wishes Anthony Carter had taken it instead. Keith DeLong with the tackle. Well, these two teams are meeting for the third time in as many years here in Candlestick. Two years ago, Minnesota exploded for 17 second quarter points, and they won that game. Last year, the 49ers got 14 in the second quarter and won that one. And today, San Francisco with 13 in quarter number two. Very important drive. I mean, obviously, this is an important drive, but it, it's imperative that Wade Wilson get this team down and score. This game's getting out of hand. Walker and Finney in the backfield. Pressure. Charles Haley. And a player down for the Vikings. I can't tell who that is, Vern, but that's Tim Irwin, the right tackle, number 76. Haley came around Irwin that time. Haley lined up as a defensive end, and there was no stunts. He just penetrated on his own. And this is over the center. This is Pete Kugler, number 67, the nose tackle. There's the game going on up the middle. Kugler to the outside, and now you see to the inside comes Haley. But I still can't see where Irwin got hurt. Tim Irwin is up and walking off by himself now. Nine-year tackle from Tennessee. Boy, that right tackle spot for the Vikings. How about Ron Yeri, Tim Irwin, Steve Riley? That's about That's the it. history of the Minnesota Vikings at right tackle. This guy is, is one of the very best, and one of the we've covered these Vikings a bunch. One of the funniest people I've ever had the pleasure of the meeting. Second down. Play fake. Wilson can run if he wants. Puts some moves on Daryl Pollard and gets it out to the 26-yard line. David Huffman has taken Tim Riley's spot at right tackle now. And Wilson running for the fourth time. We saw Dick, well, Dick Butkus and I got into it a little bit at pregame uh, on NFL Today, and one of the things he was concerned about was the double team the rotation to uh, number 81 Carter's side and that's exactly what happened that time the safety coming over flat took away Carter Carter will eventually will beat that safety if he didn't change his angle third and seven four man rush by San Francisco and they got him Kevin Fagan Fagan, number 75, sitting right over the center. The closest path to the quarterback is straight up the middle. Notice that Loudermilk turns Fagan loose, turns him over to Randall McDaniel, who will be in the Pro Bowl. Randall McDaniel, just Fagan, just blows right by him. Bucky Scribner will punt to John Taylor. At the 46. Out of bounds at the 49-yard line. 40-yard punt, four on the return. And this 49er machine is back on offense again. Bring you up to date the opening drive, and it looked impressive as uh, for Minnesota, they recovered a fumble at the eight-yard line and drove to a field goal by Rich Carlos to make it 3-0. But then a couple of plays after the kickoff, Montana to Rice. 72 yards. Then in the second quarter, Montana to Jones to make it 14 to 3. And then Montana to Taylor. The extra point was missed. And we stand now with a 20 to 3 score. Roger Cray at the 50 yard line.
One of the things, once again, Vern, that the 49ers are trying to do is when the Vikings overload their tackles and flop them, they create a bubble backside, a weak side where only one defensive lineman is, and he's covered by a linebacker, and that, once again, is the area that Joe Montana is sending his running game. One back in the backfield now on second down. And again, the short setup and the pass fired. There's a flag down. The catch is made by Rice. We might have holding. They will bring it back. Holding 62 offense. Second down. I believe this is McIntyre on Chris Dolman and McIntyre said that Dolman is the Michael Jordan, or Wallace did anyway, the Michael Jordan of the National Football League. And McIntyre inside, double him. Now Wallace to the outside there. There's Wallace, the Michael Jordan of the National Football League. And that time he tackled Michael Jordan. Chris Dolman, who led the league in sacks with 21 this year, had four in the final game against Cincinnati. That time the holding call was on Ballard. Here's Henderson in motion out of the backfield. The handoff to Roger Craig. Pulling guard. Craig scoops through near the 50-yard line. Last time a back ran for 100 yards or more against this Minnesota defense was Roger Craig in the playoff a year ago. He had an 80-yard run. To give him 135 you're today. See, you're going to see the counter here, Vern, and then watch the center, Sapulu, come out. There's the move. Craig will get around, and then you'll just see everyone seal down, and then the lead blocked by the center that time. That's amazing that a center can snap the ball and then get out and lead a sweep. Third down, four wide receiver set. Oh, incomplete. Flags down. Michael Brim was one of the defenders. We have a trio of yellow handkerchiefs in the area. There's Michael Brim. Against the Vikings. Pass interference. Number 44 defense. First down. Just keep your eyes on Brim. 44 on the left of your screen. There's Rice. He's on Rice. There's the right hand. There's the jam. And then there's the right hand going out. And then, oh, that's an, hey, that's just a tackle. Hey, that's good. You're going to get a flag, get a good one, and that's a good one. <laughs> First down and 10 after the penalty. 20 to 3, closing in on halftime. Here's Rathman. Well, Floyd Peters said yesterday morning the premium was going to be on tackling for his defensive unit, and there was a missed tackle on that play. Peters, who's back home, 53 years of age, a one-time prison guard at San Quentin here in California when he was a student at San Francisco State. You know, his name is being mentioned, Vern, around the NFL as, as possibly one of the uh, men that will fill one of the vacancies either in Atlanta or, or at Phoenix. Another one is Mike Holmgren. Mike Holmgren, yeah. Right. Here's the stretch of the chain, first down. It's a real critical drive now because... What happens even at this at this level uh, of football, the National Football League players, when you beat them and beat them and beat them and beat them, eventually they're just going to quit. I mean, it's going to happen. And the way the 49ers right now are just knocking on this door, if this keeps up, eventually the heart is taken out of the Vikings. First down and 10. Craig. To the 22-yard line. Scott Studwell in the middle. There's Tim Irwin on the sideline. Injured. Offensive right tackle. You know, we were talking a while ago about Wallace and Wallace and Bubba Paris, and they're, they're going to two-team Chris Dolman all day long, and they call themselves tag team tackles. And Bubba, you're looking at Big Bubba. He said, I'm going to wear him down. I'm going to stomp on him. I'm going to take it one step past the whistle and then when I get through beating on him and I'm tired I'm raising my hand up and Wallace will come in and he'll beat on him some when he gets tired he'll raise his hand and I'll come back in and finish him off Bubba Paris said yesterday before this game is over I want Chris Dolman to feel my mass two minute warning Harry Bradshaw here in San Francisco it's been a 49er kind of first half 
Roger Craig with 95 yards already on 11 carries. And as we said, no man has rushed for more than 100 against the Minnesota defense in 89 in the regular season. Second down and four. 49ers lead it 20 to three. That's Rathman out of the backfield. And a dead ball foul. They'll bring the play back. Dead ball. Ball start, 66 offense. Second down. That's Terry Tao. She has replaced Bruce Colley at right guard in the second quarter. So far, Minnesota 55 yards rushing and 44 passing for a total of 99. And the 49ers have just been overwhelming thus far. 294 yards. This against the number one defense in the National Football League. And that man hasn't had a bad first half. 11 of 13, three touchdowns. Play fake. Rathman. First down at the 12. Gain of 15. The neck, it's called a naked bootleg. You're going to see Rathman go this way. Montana naked bootleg. Everyone goes down inside, and Montana comes out. Rathman sneaks up, and he's wide open out in the flat. There's the pull. There's inside. Crossbuck there is. Oh, had him on the wrong side. Coming around from the back side. Still a good play, no matter how you draw it up. Good job. First and 10, 49ers at the 13-yard line. They lead it 20 to 3, 115 to go in the half. Audible. Almost picked off. Travis Curtis was the closest Viking to it. Montana sensing that time that there was single coverage on the outside and when he knew he had single coverage on the outside he knew the only guy that he had to concern himself with would be the safety in the middle and the way to get beat him was to get the ball quickly to Rice. Don't allow him to run farther but get it to him quickly. Whew, almost a good play by the Viking. Good play to knock it up but almost an interception. That makes it a second down from the 13 yard line. 20 to 3 with 1.08 to go. Taylor in motion. And again, no pressure. Touchdown, Rice. Thirteen yards. It's a route. An understatement by Jerry Burns, it appears, when he says that Montana makes the right decisions. He hasn't made a wrong one yet. Notice this, first of all, plenty of time. Montana said, I might, I'd like to have four seconds to throw the ball, but against these guys, I'm hoping to get it off in three and a half. Plenty of time, beautiful job. Montana looks right, he turns around. Rice comes across the middle. Hey, the best route in the world is always a, a crossing route. Rice crosses, Montana finds him. Jerry Rice, second touchdown today. Montana has thrown four. On 13 of 16 for 210 yards. And it is 27 to 3. The 49ers trying to tie the Pittsburgh Steelers of the 70s as the only team to win four in a decade. And of course, Joe Montana Terry with the chance to equal your record of being the only quarterback to lead a team to four Super Bowls. Well, you know, a lot of people are saying if this and if that, but when you look at a great football team, eliminate the ifs. Don't put any doubts in there because great players play great in great games. This is a great game, a big game. Montana and the 49ers have uh, just lifted their game up. Montana probably playing a very normal game by his standards, but today four touchdown passes, and then you look at what Rathman's doing, you look at their defense, and then you look at what Craig is doing, almost 100 yards. This is a great football team, and it's going to take something very special to beat these teams, and I don't see anything special out in this National Football League other than the 49ers. 
We are 63 seconds away from a conversation with, from left to right, the backs of Mr. McDonough, Mr. Butkus, and Mr. Musburger. They'll be coming up with the NFL today at halftime. Irv Cross will join them. 103 to go in the first half. And the 49ers will kick it off to Herschel Walker, who, by the way, is playing in his very first playoff game in the National Football League. Walker at the six. Down at the 24-yard line. And if there's one major, if you ask me a question, what is the one major difference in these two teams? I would say that the team in red believes, you know, they believe they're going to move the football. They believe they're going to score and win this game. On the other side, now you would have to say, I don't think the team in white really believes now that they got a chance. Boy, it, it's just all of a sudden setting in that nothing's going our way. Something really drastic has got to happen now for the Vikings. They've got to capture some type of momentum. And the only way you do it is you score touchdowns. Well, they've got 58 seconds to try and get something on the board in the first half. Caught by Dozier. Tackled by Charles Haley. You, know, you and I both thought at the beginning of the ball game that the 49er offense and the Viking defense would counterbalance each other. I really did. I, I thought it was a perfect matchup of a great defense, the best in the National Football League, against the best offense. Normally, great defenses beat great offenses. This team is not playing great defense today. There's not playing great defense. This offense is whipping them. Second down. Clock stopped in the out-of-bounds play. 50 seconds to go. Left side. That's caught. Romanowski makes the tackle of Hassan Jones at the 35-yard line. You know, also, Vern, you got to put the ball in the hands of people that can get you in the end zone. And that guy that can do that is number 81. You got to get the ball in Anthony Carter's hands. Let him have it every time. Throw him down the middle. Send him to the corner. But you got to attempt to move the ball. Stretch the safeties. Don't try to stretch the linebackers. Try to stretch the safeties and corners now, and you got to go deep. You can't piddle in, you know, dinky, dinky, dinky now. Vikings, of course, trying to go the length of the field nearly in the final two minutes or minute and three. There's a stretch of the chain now to see if the first down was obtained, and it was, so it'll be first down Minnesota. But Minnesota has not been all that effective in the final two minutes of games through the 89 season. Eight times, no touchdowns so far. They do have two field goals, but they've been intercepted three times and had to punt once. They lost the ball on down twice. Now, in contrast, in eight possessions, the 49ers in two minutes have gone for three touchdowns, three field goals. So they've scored six of the eight times they've had the ball. That's uh, really only one of those times in the punt. The other was a fumble and a missed field goal attempt. Benny and Dozier in the backfield. Wilson off balance, almost picked off. Eric Wright, one of the veterans of this ball club. As a quarterback, if you're going to hold a football a long time, a long time, you don't throw a short pass. If you hold it a long time, you throw a deep pass. And when you hold the ball five and six seconds and then attempt a four-yard pass, you're defeating the purpose and you're playing right into the hands of the 49ers. If you hold it long, you got to throw it deep. Second and ten. Wilson with 73 yards. 27 to 3. Three man rush by the 49ers. That pass, Johnny Jackson of the San Francisco 49ers, closest to it. Intended for Jim Gustafson. Well, Jim's got his gloves on. Because those gloves gives him confidence, but the ball's got to be a little higher. Actually, wade through that football, and it's a good thing he did go ahead and throw it to the ground because it would have been intercepted. Well, the gloves of Jim Gustafson, who got a chance as a, a walk-on for the Vikings, in part because his high school quarterback and roommate was Bud Grant's son. Man, that's, that's pretty good association right there. Alfred Anderson with Jeff Brooks chasing him. This is the tackle. 
And Anderson has a first down and kills the clock as he gets to the 45-yard line, 20 seconds to go. That's a gain of 12. And brings up a first down and 10. Full house on hand at Candlestick. Minnesota jumped on top, 3-0. But then the avalanche started, and four touchdown throws from Montana in the first half. Big Ben, Gustafson, and Hassan Jones back there. And it's incomplete at the 15-yard line. With 11 seconds to go. The secret... The 49ers have worked on this. This is one of the plays they worked on was the Hassan Jones Big Ben or Hail Mary. And the secret, they believe, is to take Pollard 26 and put him over Hassan Jones. The theory behind the Vikings is to run three receivers down, have the two outside receivers pick, and then allow that time Hassan Jones to single up on a defensive back, go up, and make the grab. 49ers say we're not going to let that happen. We're going to take Pollard, jam him at the line of scrimmage, and run with him man for man all the way down the field. Let's see if Pollard can jam Hassan Jones now. Ah, good jam. He did it, Vern. Yes, he did. Held him up. And the pass is intercepted at the 16-yard line. Darrell Pollard came right up in the face of Hassan Jones and held him up. And Don Griffin gets the interception. Ah, uh, he did a heck of a job. The very thing that the extra week gave these 49ers was a way to figure out how to stop the Hail Mary, a play that they used against uh, uh, the Los Angeles Rams and the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. And so they practiced and practiced and decided just take Pollard Put him on top of Jones, jam him at the line of scrimmage, and slow him down. This will be the final play of a, an extraordinary first half for the San Francisco 49ers. Joe Montana, four touchdown passes. He hasn't been touched behind the line of scrimmage. That's the end of the first half with our score. San Francisco 27, the Minnesota Vikings 3. We'll kick it deep. Herschel Walker waits for the Minnesota Vikings. We may see Tommy Kramer to open this third quarter. Here's Walker to the 23-yard line. Now let's, the flags are down at the point of the tackle, which was made by Steve Hendrickson. Tommy Kramer will open at quarterback after the penalty is marked off. Face mask, number 86 on the kicking team. First down. Tom Dooley must be from my part of the country, huh, Vern? <laughs> <laughs> you recognized an accent? <laughs> Tommy Kramer, the 34-year-old, 13-year veteran who uh, lost his starting job to Wilson a year or so ago, has started several games this year in Wilson's uh, injured absence. And Jerry Burns trying to get something going, makes a change at quarterback. Kramer goes left, incomplete. Leo Lewis, the intended receiver. Both Wilson and Kramer, of course, have been in the uh, at the controls in playoff games. Wilson three and two as a starter for the Vikings. Kramer one and two. And Wilson has had the better of it in the playoff games he has started. But now Wade Wilson. Out of Commerce, Texas, on the sideline as Jerry Burns tries to light a spark. Second and ten. Leo Lewis. Oh, boy, nearly decapitated. And a flag comes in. That may be a hit to the helmet. Chet Brooks is going to get most upset at this call. Personal foul, 49ers. Uh, this is a quick slant, and Kramer took a short. Personal foul, 31 on the defense. First down. You're going to see the quick slant, and then Lewis cleared the linebacker. Tommy held the ball a little bit too long, and then finally got it back down the field to Lewis. Too deep for a quick slant, which really brought Chet Brooks to safety in too tight, and 
really were very fortunate that time number one that Leo Lewis caught the ball and number two that he wasn't injured gain of 16 penalty of 15 it's first down at the 40 yard line Maxie split Benny out of the backfield Kramer finds his tight end down at the 27 yard line Steve Jordan and Chet Brooks with the tackle. So a nice move now, a nice open for the Minnesota Vikings. Well, it's a movement offense. You're taking Kramer and you get him outside. You give him a little bit of time, Vern. And it's an option route by the tight end, Jordan. He can go down and read the coverage. If the, if the coverage stays to the outside, then the tight end will turn and go to the inside. If the coverage stays to the inside, then Jordan just simply turns to the outside. That time he just simply turned around, saw the guy outside, hooked to the inside, and Kramer got in the ball. From the 27. First and 10. Incomplete. Intended for Herschel Walker. And Larry Roberts putting pressure on Tommy Kramer. Yeah, Larry Roberts, a man that takes one step. He gets actually, Larry Roberts, number 91, gets one yard deeper than the, than the rest of the 49er linemen. And the reason is he's playing a left defensive end, Vern, but he gets in a right-handed stance. And he has to gather himself up, so he gives himself that extra yard off the ball so that by the time he gets there, he's in the proper position. So he says, I know it's wrong, but I just can't change. I can't go to my left-handed stand. Second and ten. Opening moments of quarter number three from San Francisco. Kramer comes right, settles short for Jordan, drops the ball when hit by Keena Turner. Actually dropped it right before Turner made the pop. Hardest route in football to cover, and you heard me all year long say this, is crossing routes. And the reason is automatically the defensive back is in a trailing position when the receiver releases inside. If you go to man coverage, you're trailing. If you go to zone coverage, then the guy running the crossing routes goes through the areas. He'll run by a linebacker, open up an area, by another linebacker. And they're very, very difficult to cover crossing routes. Third and ten. Fourth and ten. Charles Haley in Kramer's face. And Rich Carlos will come on, the barefoot kicker from Salem, Ohio. Haley coming from the outside on a blitz. This is a screen that's set up, and there's no way that Kramer can come out of the play. Notice the tackle Irving disappearing the block. And now Kramer all of a sudden has Haley in his face. It's a screen. He has to get rid of it. Good job by Haley. Rich Carlos, who was a walk-on at the University of Cincinnati, kicked only as a senior in high school and started kicking barefoot because he saw Tony Franklin of A&M do it on television. Said the reason he went barefoot, 44-yarder is good. And Carlos gets his second field goal of the day. Rich Carlos, two for two, and the Vikings now trail 27 to six. 13 14 to go in the third quarter of play. They off at barefoot right foot. Carlos, uh, who, as we said, walked on at the University of Cincinnati, said he started kicking barefoot because his shoes were so bad that so when you're a walk on at Cincinnati, you don't have good shoes. Spencer Tillman at the 28-yard line. That's a return of 11. Rich, who became a folk hero in the Denver area and then had, uh, had problems. Interesting, he, he walked on with the Broncos as well, and he said he was one of 75 kickers who had a tryout with Denver. Here's an injured player down, Keith That's Henderson. Keith Henderson. First and ten. Great. Mercy. Roger Craig goes over 100 yards for the second consecutive time in a playoff game against the Vikings. Notice this area. No, 
this is the area I'm talking about. That's the bubble. There's Browner, the safety, but there's no one in here. And this is where Craig is taking the ball, counterstepping, getting in, getting outside. But that's the area that the 49ers are attacking. It's the bubble. The end crashes down. Now Sapolo's outside. Man, it's just a good job. First and 10 after the 16-yard game. Rathman. Belted. Henry Thomas, number 97, makes the tackle. Again, the injured player on the kickoff was Keith Henderson, the third-round draft choice. You know, I can't year. help, Vern, but look at Jesse Sapolo, and he's pulling outside, and he said one of the differences at playing center as opposed to guard, they called him this offseason and said, you're going to play center next year instead of guard, and he didn't want to, but he said one of the advantages is I was able to put on an extra 15 pounds because I don't have to pull and run as much. Well, today he's doing a lot of pulling. Second down. Craig behind Harris Barton's block, but then he's knocked down. It'll be third and long. Montana looking over, getting the play from Young, and Young getting the play from Siebert, and Young, and we talked to Holmgren. He was telling us that a lot of times Siebert will take the play and give it to Young, and it'll be the wrong formation or the wrong play. And Young will say, Coach, just a second. You really mean this, don't you? And he said, oh, that's right, that's right. And so Young, it's a good thing that, that Young is an experienced quarterback, knows this offense, because he can clear up the mistakes by the head coach. Third and nine. Dolman coming from the outside. Montana to Rathman. And it's another 49er first down. 73 catches in the regular season for the fullback from Nebraska. And when he was at Nebraska, Terry, he had five catches in four years. That's right. It's amazing. But most of his catches are when he is the third or fourth receiver. Montana goes through the field, goes one, two, three, pressure. Where's Rathman? Bingo just gets in the football. So most of the time, his reception comes when Montana has nowhere else to go, and all Rathman is is a relief valve, someone to help him out of trouble. Rathman, who said in 1988, he didn't drop a single pass. Not once. Flagler to the 40-yard line. Let me tell you how complicated this 49er offense is. All right. Montana talking to him. He told us that there are 100 passing plays that we have getting ready for this football game. Young will send the plays in. There's Holmgren, the, the offensive coordinator. He will send the play in. All of Young will do is give Joe the play. And now Montana has three formations for every passing play, and he has to look at his personnel to call the proper formation. Well, he's done it pretty well today. No, I would say he has. Four touchdowns in the first half. He's being chased this time and throws it in the direction of Tom Rathman, so it is not intentional grounding. Tom Dooley, the referee. There's Al Noga, who put the pressure on Joe Montana. And Joe can't. <laughs> yeah, when you're leading 27 to 6, you can smile a little bit. And the Montana had the uh, kind of an eerie kind of way about him this week he was laughing and cutting up and giggling and kind of just really didn't know what to think about it and I think a lot of that was just to take the pressure off you know people put so much pressure on him because of his heroics in the second half the second two minutes thing and he says I don't really like those situations I don't like them at all there's too much pressure on me yet it responds beautifully Mike Sherrard back in the lineup again on third and seven Outside rush, Montana goes deep for Rice, who adjusts its overthrow. It'll be fourth down. And something went wrong for the first time today. Pressure, that's what went wrong. You're right back to what the Vikings wanted to do. They wanted to force Montana to pull the ball down after looking at his third receiver. If he did that, that would allow the pass rush to get to him took too long Montana finally had to throw the ball away this will be Barry Helton's first punt today and Leo Lewis waits at the 10 yard line nice, beautiful. that's a dandy that is a dandy Nine yard line. Timeout. Barry Helton, the punter for the 49ers, and he is a right 
left-footed kicker, and you would think that if he was going to kick the ball out of bounds or angle at the goal line, that he would do it by going to the right. But right-footed kickers always turn and kick to the left. And the reason is, if they miss it, it still goes out of bounds to the left. If they try to do it to the right, chances are they will shake it. I learned something from you every week. Yeah, I was a punting fool, wasn't I? First and ten, Kramer almost hit Steve Jordan, but Jordan wasn't ready for it. And again, the Vikings start from deep in their own end of the field, this time at the nine-yard line. They've averaged starting from their own 19. Look at the field position for the 49ers. Yeah, well, I mean, you, that explains a lot. Games like this with great offense, and if you have great field position to go with it, it only compounds the problem. That was a slow screen that Chuck Kramer was trying to get off burn, but the pressure by the 49ers was too quick. Totally disrupted the uh, screen. Second and ten. Bullet. First down at the 27-yard line to Steve Jordan, who has been the most active pass receiver today. Well, the key is Jordan is getting off the line of scrimmage. That's number one. If you want to stop him, you have to slow him down by putting a linebacker over Jordan and then jam him at the line of scrimmage. But notice number 83, Jordan. Notice he releases outside. There's no one over him, so he has a free reign. Now he goes down. He reads the coverage and just simply turns inside. Kramer reads it and gets him the football. But to stop Jordan, you have to put someone over him and jam him down at the line of scrimmage. First and 10 from the 26-yard line. 9-18 to go third quarter. Incomplete intended for Leo Lewis this time. Vikings going without Herschel Walker on the sideline. Well, they're throwing the football and they're using uh, their backs and tight ends to bring the plays in and out. I don't know why Herschel wouldn't be in the football game. We even heard that some thought said in, in, the, in, Minnesota, in the Vikings that Herschel wasn't a good receiver, and I found that rather hard to believe after what he did uh, with the Dallas Cowboys. He is a terrific receiver. Second down and 10. Alfred Anderson, the only back. Kramer pulls up left. Fires it for Anthony Carter, incomplete. Only got one foot down. Anthony Carter, who conceivably could be playing his final game as a Viking, he is one of those who had contract problems with Mike Lynn, and his uh, contract runs out at the end of the season, but he said yesterday, I'm going to give Minnesota the first shot to sign me. Chris Dolman, of course, also going to test the free agent waters for the Vikings, and Joey Brown are the other unhappy contractee yes. has one more year option year Dolman was telling us you know he, he said they made their business decision by not signing me and I'm making mine now I'm going to go after the bucks third down three wide receivers in kicked away great play Daryl Pollard here's a kid who is a Testament to tenacity. Cut by this very same football team five separate times. Kept coming back, working out on his own, hoping for a shot as a special teamer. And then he replaced Tim McKire as a starter this season and uh, is now a part of that secondary. That he studies coordinators, not necessarily the receivers. He studies coordinators to be able to pick up tendencies, and that will take him to the player that's catching the ball. John Taylor. Grabs Bucky Scripter's 30-yard punt and returns it four yards. Darrell Pollard heads to the sideline for the 49ers. They hold on to a 27-6 lead. 49ers hold on and win. They will host the NFC Championship game next week. And, of course, tomorrow, the Rams and the Giants on CBS in the other divisional playoff. Roger Craig heads out of the backfield. Montana with that three-step drop. John Taylor... Ran the slant pattern in front of Reggie Rutland. Steve Wallace, who has given way to Bubba Paris. They're the tag team tackles. What is this, Jeff? Uh, uh, 
What is I this? Look, well, it looks like a purse. That's what it looks like. But I, you, you think that guy, look at that. You think that guy would carry a purse? I don't think so. It looks like it might be one of those electronic stimulators, Vern. I see a line coming out of it. That's a battery pack that has a stimulator. It looks like it might be going to the leg of Wallace. Rogers, Craig, Tom Raffman down to the 35-yard line. Bubba Paris working on Chris Dolman to lead the way. Tackles normally against quick defensive ends don't make a great all-out effort. They normally set and kind of wait, but here's Bubba. Look at Bubba going down and all 340 pounds of him, and he's cutting people down, going to their legs and making them go over him. Bubba's got a little kick in him, doesn't he? Got a little sprint in his get-up. Second down and five. Montana, why not? Oh, it's dropped. Incomplete. Roger Craig. Bubba Paris was upset with Chris Dolman. He thought that Dolman had, uh, had slighted his abilities last year. Well, there's the double team. You see Brent Jones burn 84 and getting the first shot on Dolman, slowing him down so that Bubba can get that mass. I'm going to him to feel my mass and that's a bunch of mass right there but yeah he doesn't think that Dolman respects him and he wants him to respect him and Dolman told us he looked right and said hey I think he's a great tackle I respect him a lot I just think he's going through one of those personal problems right now Keith Henderson back in the lineup had a pinched nerve but that's him in motion number 30 on third down Montana that's a first down Mike Wilson Number 85, and Bubba Paris got into a little bit of a confrontation. There was a little game on the inside with Millard. Now Bubba sits down. No, he's setting up to the outside. There's the spin move by Dolman. And then the, well, there it is. Paris said, I'm going to take it. Whoa. 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 A kick. And then Bubba just laid him out. Bubba said, I'm going to go one step past the whistle. Well, he did about four and did a little dance and then took the foot of Dolman right in the stomach. And I believe there was a penalty on the play as well. No, in, there was a backfield in motion penalty. Well, the Paris Dolman confrontation continues. Yeah, it's getting good, too. Third down and 10, 27 to 6. Montana. Reggie Rutland with terrific coverage on John Taylor. And it'll be fourth down. You know, I want to give Bubba his due, but he's doing a whale of a job. He's slinging that mass all over Dolman, and right now the tag team tackles haven't really been necessary because his tag team partner, Steve Wallace, has got a little injury, and he's working it on the sideline, and so Bubba is having to do it all by himself. But... He said, I'm going to wear him down for three quarters, and I'm going to knock him out in the fourth. Steve Wallace with cramps in his right leg, and that was the reason for that stimulator you saw a moment ago. Here's Helton kicking to the left side again. And again, puts it out of bounds inside the 20. That one will be... at the 17-yard line. Yeah, you see that umpire gets behind gets behind the punter so he can line it up. He sees where it's going out and brings the, the other official inside, lines him up, says, there it is, right there. I've made up my mind. 49ers up 27 to 6, and those pretty pictures being provided by the Goodyear Flip Columbia from Carson, California, the pilot Charles Russell, and the home base is Downey, California. That Flip travels over 100,000 miles every year covering major sporting events. First and ten, Tommy Kramer on in relief. Avoid Wilson in the second half, and the Vikings operate from the 17. Wilson, wide open, tight end Steve Jordan out to the 43-yard line. And Ronnie Lott makes the tackle. The difference between the Viking offense, or the overall theory, and the 49ers, Vern, is that the Viking offense, the first read is deep. The quarterbacks are taught to look deep and see if they can get the deep pass. That's number one, and then work backwards, whereas the 49er offense is taught to look short and then go deep as a last resort. That's a gain of 27 yards, and it's Jordan's fifth catch of the game. 
for 80 yards. Four-man rush, Romanowski coming from the outside. Alfred Anderson gets a nice roll block, and then a pretty good defensive play cuts him down at the 50-yard line. Well, what they're trying to do is run screens. You run screens to slow down a pass rush, but the pass rush is forcing Kramer to come out to the side that they're trying to set the screen up, and that's bringing everybody over there with them, so when he does throw it, they're only getting two or three yards out of it. That'll bring up a second down now, and again, Herschel Walker is in the lineup this time. Lewis goes to the left. Anthony Carter comes to the right. Second down and three. Kramer is five of 13 in this quarter. Carter, first down at the 40. Fumble. 49er football. Ronnie Lott. The all-pro free safety recovers the fumble of Anthony Carter. Look at the eyes a lot. A free safety has the, has the freedom to do whatever he wants to. The key to look inside to read the quarterback, and Lott has that freedom. He comes inside. He reads, number one, the three-step drop of Kramer tells him it's a quick pass, so therefore he comes up tighter. That's number one. Then after Carter makes the hit or catch, then the ball is fumbled. He's right there to help out. Uh, apparently, they're going to look at this on replay to see if that fumble did occur. There's Ronnie Lott, who as a senior at Southern California, shared the defensive backfield chores with Dennis Smith. They both became Pro Bowl players in the NFL. After further review, the play will stand as tall. Okay. Dennis Smith, of course, now plays for the 49ers, where he is a strong safety. He was a free safety and Lott the strong safety at Southern Cal. First down and 10. Roger Craig, Harris pulling. And Craig to the 45-yard line where the tackle is made by Scott Studwell. One of the things, one of the things safeties do, Vern, is you always key into the backfield to see what the set of the backfield is. Now, when you look back, notice that here's Montana. There's the fullback. There's the halfback. The weak safety has cheated up because this is a weak set, and the threat to run is to that side. But watch what Montana does. He turns around and goes away from that. Second down and seven. Ah! To go. Third quarter. And let's see if Joe Montana bent his knees to draw Keith Millard offside. Number 75 on the defense. Remember we said in the first half, a year ago, Montana moved his left foot and got Millard offside. And that time, he moved the toe. He said he was going to bend his knees. Does he bend his knees? He doesn't do anything. All he did was change the cadence. Instead of going on set, ready, hut, he went set, ready, hut, hut, hut. And the hut got that time Millard, who is one of those guys so intent, one little move, anything out of the normal, and he's off the ball. Two, Brent Jones Trap. and the tackle Ken Clark who is playing defensively now for the Vikings number 71 was part of it he has replaced Henry Thomas and they will bring out the chain to see if they got the first down one of the things we have not seen today is a play action pass by Montana and he no. said he said I'm not going to do any right. play action passes said I, why, why aren't you? He said, these guys are too good at rushing the passer, and I don't want to turn my back on them. He said, if I did one, I'd do it so quick. I might as well just go ahead and drop back normally anyway. So today, you haven't seen, and you probably won't see any play action by Montana. Well, it has been Joe Montana's brilliance, coupled with an outstanding effort by the offensive line. Again, Hate to be redundant, but this is a Viking team that had 71 sacks in the regular season. They have not touched Montana today. Zero sacks. Brent Jones across the middle on first down, and that time Montana did go down. Ray well, that, Berry with a tackle. Excuse me, Terry. I'm, I'm sorry, Vern. That time Bubba had, that time he had... Dolman lined up man for man. He had him by himself. Let me show you that there's Bubba inside and there's the spin move. One of the problems that a big man like like Bubba Paris can do is you see Montana get hit by Dolman. A big man can't fire off after a little guy that's quick. 
He has to sit and let the little guy come to him. Bubba went after Dolman, feeling his oats, and it cost him. Second down and five. Dolman adjusts his pass to the quarterback, and they run right by him. But the tackle made at the 41-yard line by Scott Studwell on Roger Craig. Craig over 100 yards, 117 to be precise. Holman said coming into the training camp this year, the offensive coordinator for the 49ers, he said there were two things we had to do. Number one, we had to take pressure off of Rice, and we had to take pressure off of Roger Craig. So therefore, Rathman had to get involved in the passing game and the running game, and Taylor who is in the Pro Bowl this year, the other wide receiver for the 49ers, he had to come on and become a vital part of our offense, which both of these guys have. Third and two, Rassen, no, it'll be fourth down. Bubba Perez trying to lead the way, this time working against Keith Millard. Well, he's had good success today against Dolman. Now coming down inside on Millard, he took the angle, but Millard is so quick. He read the blocking scheme. The lineman come down. Millard goes against it, gets outside, and helps make the tackle. Bubba wasn't going to eat. Said he's going to lose some weight. Going to lose about eight pounds before the game. But yet the other day, we asked him, where are you, where are you going in such a hurry? He said, I got to go. I'm going to go get some chicken wings. So I thought you said you're going to lose some weight. He said, I got to go get me some chicken wings. Pleasant guy. Very pleasant guy. Fourth down. And the 49ers will go for it. Delay of game call, I think. As Hilton went up under center. <laughs> Why not? And they uh, exceeded the 45-second clock. David Huffman says we'll take the penalty. George Seifert. Delay of game, offense, fourth down. And Helton now will go into a regular punt formation. Seifert, who grew up in the Bay Area, of course, was Bill Walsh's defensive coordinator here. One-time college coach at Cornell. Graduated from Utah. He looks like he would be a college coach at, at Cornell. Mm -hmm. Studious looking. Elegant, kind of classy looking kind of guy. Goes with the territory, huh? Leo Lewis back. Ten yard line. Out of bounds near the 16. 35 yard punt and six on the return. 27 to 6 with 138 to go, third quarter. Looks like the 49ers are going to be home for the championship game next week, and their opponent will be determined tomorrow because the Rams go back east for the third week in a row, this time to take on the New York Giants. Pat and John will be there. So will Brent, Irv, Will, Dick, the whole bunch. Begins tomorrow with the NFL today at 12 o'clock Eastern time, the Rams and the Giants. Good weather, I understand. It's going to be about 40, limited wind. So good day for the Rams and Everett and his receivers. And, of course, Phil Sims. Inside give. D.J. Dozier, number 42, makes the tackle. The other AFC divisional game that was played this afternoon, what a thrilling game that was, as Cleveland outlasted Buffalo 34-30. So the Browns will play the winner of tomorrow's Denver-Pittsburgh game in the AFC Championship game one week from now. What do you think about that? Steelers and the, and the Broncos. I know I, that you think the Steelers I, have a chance. Hey, I got a, one of those little sneaky suspicions that if Bubby can play and get the ball downfield, I got I to gotta, I gotta believe they can win that game. Second down and five. Kramer slips and lets it go, and it's caught. Anthony Carter to the 35-yard line. Tackle made by Don Griffin. Well, Dick Butkus and I had it out a little bit earlier, and he said they were going to double-team Carter, and Seifert said they were going to double-team Carter today, but now with a big lead, they're not double-teaming Carter, and the thing to do is just what Kramer did, send Carter down, bring him across the middle, because with this big lead, all the 49ers are doing is dropping their linebackers back and playing those simple zones and open up some huge holes for Carter to work and catch the ball. Vikings need to do something quickly. They need three touchdowns to tie. D.J. Dozier to the 40-yard line. And that should be the final play of the third quarter. Matt Millen and Michael Walter were there to make the tackle. 
That's the end of the third quarter with our score, the 49ers 27, the Minnesota Vikings 6. We now pause for this word from your local station. This is CBS. Big Park in San Francisco, where the 49ers, in quest of their fourth Super Bowl championship, lead the Minnesota Vikings 27 6 in step number one on that path. Vern Lundquist, Terry Bradshaw, Minnesota with the second down at their own 41. Kramer pulls up and lobs it short, incomplete for Rick Penny. It'll be third down. Keith Millard, who is uh, from nearby Pleasanton, California. Family still out here. Been a very disappointing day for Millard, Dolman, Thomas, Clark, Noga, that front four and five of the Minnesota Vikings. And for Herschel Walker. On the sideline on third down and four. Jim Gustafson in motion. Comes a stunt. Romanowski hurries. Rick Finney caught behind the line and struggles for yardage, but does not quite get the first down. Nice effort. Kevin Fagan with a tackle. Yeah, that was that was a great effort by Finney. Stopped, made a, made the grab, but kept back. You know, kept pushing with his legs, driving, trying to squeeze all he could get out of it and, and get close to the first down. And doggone near did it. Just an excellent, excellent job by him. Vikings will go for it now, trailing by 21 with 14.20 to go. So fourth and one, and Minnesota will go. Herschel Walker comes in. I don't know why he hasn't been in. Anyway, the guy runs about a 9200, a 4240, and can break something any time. So get your best in the football game. Rick Benny, that's a first down, Minnesota, to the 46-yard line. Out goes Walker again. You know, normally I can understand Walker going out if the Vikings do indeed play with one back, and that one back would be Finney or Alfred Anderson, who can block a little bit better than Walker can. But if you're going two back sets, or even even with the speed that Walker has, use him as a flanker. A lot of times when you take a back out, Vern, and put him wide, the other team puts a strong safety on him to cover him man to man. I saw that graphic on Herschel. Eight carries, most of those in the first quarter. Here's Kramer. Intercepted. Ronnie Lott. Touchdown. for the touchdown 58 yards as he stepped in front of Leo Lewis five interceptions in the regular season the career leader he broke the record held by the great Jimmy Johnson earlier this season and now Ronnie Lott from the reverse angle 58 yards there is terrific player Notice Kramer standing, striding, looking to the right, and Lott in that free safety position just stares down Kramer, and from the free safety position, he takes that aggressiveness, follows the eyes, gets a break on the ball, intercepts it, goes 58 yards. To the test drive the new Accord, you have to drive it to believe it. Today's Duracell, the copper top battery. And by Miller Highlight, by that man of Miller, the best comes shining through. 49ers get a 58-yard touchdown return with the intercepted pass from Ronnie Lott. Mike Cooper will kick off. Herschel Walker, the deep back. It is 34-6. Walker at the 14. 
Cut down at the 31-yard line. And a fight is broken out at the 25-yard line. Spencer Gilman, I think, is part of it. Benny. Rick Benny was the Viking participant, but they're quickly broken up. First down, Minnesota. 27 to 3 at halftime. Minnesota's worst playoff loss, 34 to 9 a year ago. Rich Gannon has come in at quarterback now. The seldom used third year man from Delaware. Gannon, number 16. Kevin Fagan. Joey Browner. Scott Studwell. Who said yes, he will be back for another year at 35 years of age. 12.50 to go. Gannon has thrown a pass since 1989. Here's his first. And it's complete, out to the 32. He's an interesting guy, Terry, because we keep hearing every every summer, Rich Gannon has a, a load of potential. This is his third year, and he just hasn't had a chance to play. Well, we've seen him warm up. It, you know, you can you can tell a little bit about his physical ability. He throws the ball extremely well. The wrist pass, really snaps it, tight spiral, big, strong arm. And that potential thing, you know, you can hear that all day long. And guy, all of a sudden, he's 32 years old and still got all this potential. But right now, Vikings are going to get an idea, a sense of what this young man can do under fire. Alfred Anderson gets popped. Tim McTire makes the tackle. It'll be fourth down. John Taylor goes back to return the punt as this crowd gives the defense a standing O. Bucky Stridner blocked. Mark Dusbonic picks it up for the Vikings, but it's going to go San Francisco's way. Terrence Flagler, I think, Terry. Coming up the middle. Scribner, a left-footed kicker. Finney coming over. Notice 31 sliding over to the right. Sees that he's going to need help. Good thing that well, Finney goes right by. I see what happened. He didn't see this guy coming up inside. Number 23. Spencer Tillman. Yeah, Spencer Tillman Flagler. comes up inside. And then all of a sudden, Henderson from the inside and behind him. He's the one that actually gets in burn and blocks the punt. Joe Montana still the quarterback. First down at the 20. Roger Craig goes left. Harris Barton, great block. The pulling tackle from the right side. Now that's the old counter tray that the Redskins introduced to the National Football League, and everyone has their version. The 49er version is where Montana just simply turns his back to the line and hands off, and the off guard and tackle pull and lead the way. Joe Montana brings him up. I'm surprised Joe Montana still in the game. I don't really understand why with 34 to 6 he would still be in there. He may be chasing some of your records. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> that's not fair. Montana, <laughs> left side. You don't think that's the case. Well, let's, uh, let's just check the comparison. Now, <laughs> Joe has a chance to go for his fourth Super Bowl this year. Playoff comparison. Let's see, you played 19 more games than he has. All right. He's got uh, one less Super Bowl win. Well, wait a minute, let's don't you skipping stuff. No, right, no, no. Get, get down there to the bottom. If oh, he no, throws no, no. one more touchdown pass, he ties you with 30. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Ties me. Yeah. Yards are about the same, aren't they? Yeah. Completions, he's got me there. Uh huh. 
you got to yeah. start figuring the, uh, the no. statistical comparison. Hey, it's getting to a point to even mention or compare me with Montana is an insult to him. He's a pretty good quarterback. He's doggone straight. And so are you. Roger Craig. And, of course, the interesting thing, just to complete the story of, of Terry and Joe, but this is a class act on the field right now, Mr. Joe Montana. And one of his heroes when he was growing up was Terry Bradshaw. And I know that that means a lot to you. Well, it, it does. And people have asked me, well, Montana's going to tie your record and, and Montana's going to be. I said, that's great. If he wasn't such a good person, I might, I'd still say that's great. But inside, I wouldn't want him to do it. But I really don't mind. He is such a wonderful person in a class. That's a class organization. But I really don't mind. You have to admire talent. You have to admire people that are as brilliant and are history makers like Montana and the 49ers. And hey, I have off to him. They got a chance. Go do it. Gopher is the only one of the 45 who's having a bad day. Poor Michael Gopher has missed two field goals and an extra point, so it will not be a memorable afternoon for him, but it will be for Joe Montana. hopeful and six-time Honda Civic owner. Some people have all the fun. During Hurricane Hugo, when speed was critical, the Allstate team helped thousands of policyholders get a fast start on recovery. All the debris that's piled back here is part of my house. This huge oak tree is about six feet in diameter fell across our carport. And, uh, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Allstate's been so good to me. With 10 seconds to go, it's all tied up. Send in the secret weapon. Can it be? Yes, it is! A legendary Wild Willie Wint! Wow, Willie Wint. My brother greatest man to ever play the game. With Wild Willie, will they win the case of Miller Lite and go to the Super Bowl? Just give me the ball. The Wild Card Romping Rams, the beasts of the East Giants. The NFC playoff battles continue to mock. 9.43 remaining in this divisional playoff, NFC divisional playoff. The Minnesota Vikings trailing the 49ers 34-6. Rich Gannon, the third quarterback used by Jerry Burns. Young man out of Delaware as Wilson played the first half. It was 27-3 at halftime. Kramer the third quarter, and now Gannon gets his chance. Screen pass. D.J. Dozier comes left. And... Uh, he has knocked out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Bill Romanowski, number 53, makes the tackle. Romanowski, a firebrand out of Boston College, who was a third-round draft choice a year ago. Coming in with Ricky Ellison being down and and uh, Jim Fonhorst. Yeah, down. Fonhorst down. They brought it. Ellis, this guy, Romanowski's moved up and boy, has been a real impact player at outside linebacker. And, and then Millen, Matt Millen coming to the inside is really plays like a 4-3 linebacker. He's the run stopper, big guy, and forcing everything to Michael Walker. But Romanowski having a heck of a year. Dozier sports through for the first down at the 34-yard line. And Larry Roberts makes the tackle. 9-20 remaining in the ballgame. 49ers at home next week against either the Rams or the Giants. Here's Gannon back. Out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Game one. Well, Mike Lynn, the general manager of the Minnesota Vikings, his team trailing now 34-6. It was Mike Lynn who engineered the acquisition of Herschel Walker at midseason with the Cowboys. And he said at that point, if we don't go to the Super Bowl, you can call this a bad trade. So the pressure will mount, I'm sure. 
as this uh, enigma that is the Minnesota Viking football team tries to find solutions for the puzzle. Walker stays on the sideline. Picked off. This will be six more. Tim McTyre. No, it won't. <laughs> no, it won't. He pulled a muscle. Well, he has a groin burn. He had a groin injury coming into this game. It kept him out. He, along with Eric Wright, both have had growing problems, and McHire's kept out of this football game, but said he was ready to play, and once again, it looks as though he re-injured the groin. If you're going to throw deep sideline routes, you got to unload it a little bit quicker. This kid has a strong arm, but the ball's got to be thrown out a little bit quicker and then bring Lewis back. Don't throw it at the receiver. When you throw it across the field, you must bring the receivers back, but... Cannon will learn this is a good lesson for him as the growing goes out on McHire and he falls down to the ground. Tim McHire missed the last two games with that uh, injured groin muscle and it went out on him again. He limps to the sideline but gets the interception. Joe Montana, that looked like, uh, remember Troy Aikman of the Cowboys got into trouble when he was trying to signal a formation? Looked like Montana was doing the same thing and now they do call timeout. So. I'd re I really would like to know why why Joe's in there. I mean, really and truthfully, with 8.59 left, I believe I'd get him out and put Young in. Records. This year, Corporal Mike Gallagher had a remarkable homecoming while stationed overseas. Mike, can you see me? Yeah, you look great. I can't believe it. All you. digital fiber optic Come video on, conferencing from U.S. Bye. Sprint. Uh, hi, Mom. Someone else is here to see you, too. Michael William, I'd, I'd like you to meet Patrick John Callagher. Can you see him? There may be bigger business applications for him, Sprint's Mom? video conferencing, but none more important. According to the latest estimates, Earth will soon be inhabited by more than 5.2 billion people. Where will they all fit? Is a police chief the victim of prejudice or revenge? Diane Carroll and Richard Crenna. I don't like you using yourself as bait. Murder in black and white, Sunday. It's lights, cameras, contractions. I think that twins you with it. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go get Don and Phil. The, the Everly Brothers? No, the Orderlies. Don. It's Stephanie's blessed event. I can see our baby. I can see it too, Steph. I see, I see a little bald head with glasses. That's the doctor. Poor baby's a doctor. And old new Newhart, Monday. For Steve Jordan and his Minnesota teammates, a terribly long afternoon. They trail. 34 to 6 with 8.59 to go in the game. Joey Browner, defensive stalwart, is going to sit the rest of this one out. Donnie Kramer. Mike Merriweather has an Achilles Hill injury, acquired a trade with the Steelers. He sits in some out too, never did even shoot up for it. Roger Craig, touchdown! You know, there has to be something that we don't know as to why Montana stayed in this football game and why the 49ers ran this ball in for a touchdown. I, I really, the, the way they're pointing fingers and laughing, you got a feeling something's going on that we don't know about, but I don't, just, I, I'm not upset that they scored, certainly, but to leave Joe in there, I think I would get him out of there. Anything can happen. What if the Vikings decide, hey, I had enough of this. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to load on you. What the heck's going to happen to me? Mm -hmm. They go in and take one out on Joe Montana because they're frustrated. Get him out of there. He doesn't need to be in the football game. Get him out. Lloyd Peters, a defensive coordinator whose team has been dismantled today by Montana. And Michael Kofer gets the extra point. Well, you're looking at Montana. It's going to break all those Super Bowl records and all those playoff records, but I got. I just got to believe, Vern, as you look at the touchdown up inside by Craig. I just got to believe that maybe I got one thing he doesn't have. Maybe I got average per attempt. You know, maybe I have something in the record book that I'm going to 
to be able to have over this guy. Maybe. Average average yards per attempt. That's right. Joe's even laughing at me. Look, he's laughing at me. He heard me say it. Well, I believe you do. There, there we are. In the playoffs. Oh! Look at this. <laughs> oh, God. Well, thank you, God, for, for saving something for me. <laughs> you got him. I got him. Boy, you wait till I see him. You think I'm not going to brag? <laughs> well, you were the first to lead a team before, <laughs> yeah, right? right? That, yeah, that's going to be real good when I'm 60 years first. Man. <laughs> Montana and Rice, they got the first touchdown today, 72 yards. That gave San Francisco a 7-3 lead at the time. Oh, yeah, there you go. Well, I'm, at least those guys do it here in the West Coast where it's warm. They, I, you know. I went to school with four of those guys. Here's the kickoff. Leo Lewis is knocked out of bounds up near the 28-yard line. 41 to 6. It was 27 to 3 at the half. The 49ers at home next week against either the Rams or the Giants. We were with these Vikings yesterday. Did you not have the impression that they were so wired up, so ready to play, and they were talking it? And I really, I, I came away and I said, you know what? These guys are ready to play. I, I'm really you and find I were, this hard to believe. You and I were down on the field talking to Keith Millard an hour before the game, and I was more convinced then than ever that this was going to be a very close ball game. But it has been a complete rout. 8.49 remaining. Gannon. Left side for Finney. He's knocked down to the 30-yard line. Daniel Stubbs, number 96. Minnesota in the hurry up offense now. That pass caught by Anthony Carter. And he is down to the 39 yard line. See if the Vikings go without the huddle again. No, Carter's hurt. Anthony Carter is down. Carter, 81 at the top of your screen will go down and come up underneath Gustafson. Gustafson going deep. Finney out to pick for Carter. Good catch. Now let's see where he gets hurt. Looks like his leg slipped. Looks like his leg slipped, Vern. I can't tell. There at 81. Let's see again. This the reverse angle. Down. Feet right there. away. Right there, the right leg. Holt coming in. Pierce Holt. Let's see if we can tell again. It's his right leg. It gets caught in behind him when Holt hits him, actually turns it and pins it in behind Carter as he goes down. Anthony Carter continues to get treatment at the 37-yard uh, line. Again, the 49ers will be at home next week against either the Rams or the Giants. And John Robinson's Rams take on Bill Parcells' Giants tomorrow. Begin for the NFL today at 12 o'clock Eastern time. Brent McGang will be back for that. And then Pat and John will be along with the Rams-Giants game tomorrow. Anthony Carter helped to the sideline. Nugget and O.J. Anderson having a, a big year at age 32. Over 1,000 yards rushing. Young team, the Giants, come back. Good defense. Outstanding quarterbacking. That'll be a heck of a game. First and ten, Minnesota. Gannon across the middle. And the tackle made at the 42-yard line by Chet Brooks on Herschel Walker. You were talking earlier, Vern, about what a puzzle it is trying to trying to figure out what's happened to the to the Vikings this year, especially offensively. And let's see what happens. Walker thought the ball was going down. Looks like Here's Gannon as they went quickly. And Jim Gustafson with a heck of a catch. Pass a little behind him and a nice catch by Jim Gustafson, 22 yards. 
Hey, where's he been all day? Got the glove zone, got the confidence, says he can run routes as good as anyone, works his zone as well as anyone by his own admittance. First down, four-man rush. Gannon, deep right side, incomplete. Intended for Leo Lewis. Anyway, I was saying it was, it's a puzzle about the Vikings, you know, with the injuries they had in training camp, the holdouts, and the offense never did get on track. Wade Wilson, all-pro quarterback last year, but the offense never did come along to complement the defense. Never did. Even in the Cincinnati game where they had a great first half, they had a very average second half. But the consistency that, takes, that it takes to win in the National Football League just never did uh, make itself known on the offensive side of the Vikings this year. And who knows, maybe there'll be some changes. Maybe there'll be some quarterback changes. Second down, twisted right knee for Anthony Carter. Don't know if he'll be back in the game. Gannon pulls up and finds a receiver at the 19-yard line. That'll be another first down as Steve Jordan makes his seventh grab of the day. And again, the hurry-up offense now. The clock shows 6.45 remaining. Wade Wilson played the first half and his bench. Tommy Kramer played the third quarter. Rich Cannon chased by Stubbs. And goes out of bounds. Don Griffin there to make sure he goes out of bounds. Minnesota playing on the road for the ninth time in 1989. And they have not had a good record away from home. Two and six. That'll fall to two and seven today. They were undefeated at home. The only team that could claim that record. You know, that's another one of the things that that I looked at in comparing these two teams was at the 49ers, the two games they lost. They lost them right here at Candlestick Park. Right. Second down. 6.31 to go. Herschel Walker up the middle. Larry Roberts made the tackle. And again, the hurry up offense. 6-12 to go in the ballgame. That pass caught it for three. Leo Lewis in front of Daryl Pollard. Good job by this young quarterback, although you've got to consider the situation, but excellent job of moving, moving around. He's shown the ability to run out of the pocket, and scramble, and throw on the run, and got a good, strong arm, and got to be impressed a little bit. But once again, you have to also understand it's 41-6. to six, Yeah. 49 are just going to drop back there in really no big hurry. They feel no threat here. Of course, the last team to repeat as Super Bowl champions, Terry Bradshaw and the Steelers in 79, 78 and 79, can the 49ers do it in 88 and 89? It's uh, interesting how end of the decade teams have been able to repeat. Baltimore did it in 58 and 59 and Philadelphia at the end of the 40s. The only team that did not repeat were at the end of the 60s. But the 49ers certainly making a strong, strong bid today. Guy McIntyre with a huge grin. Number 62, he blocked for Herschel Walker when they were teammates at the University of Georgia. And Bubba Paris, number 77, a good day today. He was a Excellent. teammate of Anthony Carter's when they played at Michigan. So there are a lot of lingering relationships between these two teams that will outlast the ball game itself. A very focused team, 49ers, very focused. You don't see anybody writing books, no one doing movies, lot, not a lot of commercials, even though they won the Super Bowl, even by their star, Montana All Rice. But the fact is, a very focused group that is very much believed in winning. Rick Fenney, touchdown, Minnesota. So the fullback who grew up in Snohomish, Washington, and played for the University of Washington, gets the first touchdown for the Vikings today. And that makes it a 41-12 ball game with the extra point to come. Rich Carlos will try and tack on the extra points. Well, he's going to have a string broken today, isn't he, Vern? Said he's played against these 49ers three times and has kicked the winning field goal in all three games, has never lost. 
to the 49ers. That, of course, was when he was with Denver. And you're right, that streak comes to an end. Coming up tonight on CBS, we begin with Paradise. That's followed by Tour of Duty. Then on Saturday night with Connie Chung, how much do you want to bet that some nuns who've never been to a football game know more about it than you do? Their story and more tonight on Saturday night with Connie Chung. And tomorrow, the Rams and the Giants, 12 noon Eastern time, the NFL today. And then the ball game at 12.30. Herschel Walker. I don't think the Vikings really know how to use this man. You think they'll change their offensive scheme? If, if, if they stay a passing offense, no. I think, once again, the trade was a bad trade because Herschel needs to run the ball out of the eye. He's a kind of back who doesn't work well out of the split backs going from left to right. He's not a good back to run and cut. But if you put him in the eye and he gets deep enough, he, between the tackles and with the power, he sees things better. So that's why he is better suited out of the eye. But in the National Football League, passing teams do not get in the eye. That's not where you can protect best. That's not where you can do a lot of things. And so, therefore, it doesn't really work to Walker's favor in a passing attack. So maybe, uh, who knows? Carlos will try the onside kick. It's taken by Tom Raffman. He of the good hand. And Raffman is down at the 42-yard line. Jerry Burns, I don't know. He says, I don't know. He said that. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what I don't know who's going to play. I don't know how this is going to work out. Asked him, are you ready? He said, how do you ever know? And obviously they weren't. And he said, well, when it's over, I'm going to go play golf in Jamaica. So it's going to happen a little earlier than he wanted. New quarterback in, Steve Young. As Joe Montana will get a rest with four touchdowns all in the first half. And look at Young. He has some pretty gaudy statistics himself in relief. Hand off to Flagler. And he's out to the 45-yard line. 5.35 to go. Al Noga makes the tackle. Still no sacks. This offensive line of the San Francisco 49ers up against a team that had... Uh, obtained 71 sacks this year and this and this offensive line of the 49ers albeit very versatile with pulling guards and tackles and able to do a lot of things gave up 45 sacks this year which is you know it, it kind of lends you to believe that you know these guys aren't the best pass rush pass blockers in the world but today man they certainly elevated their status quite a bit here's Sapolu playing at guard pulling for Flagler who comes around the right side to the 46. Jim Irwin Injured in the first half. Sapulu back at, at the pool position. And they got Chuck Thomas at the, in its center now. Terry Tosh at right guard. Martin is still in there. Yeah, there's a new setup there. Thomas at center. Sapulu back at his old spot at guard. Of course, Sapulu took the place of our colleague, Randy Cross. Many times an all-pro at that spot. There's Chuck Thomas. Jesse Sapolo, who said he likes being guard more than he does center because he feels more athletic at guard. Here's Flagler. I listen. What did he they mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> you were going to ask me, huh? Exactly. Well, you made the statement. Well, I, was, I think it I'm... probably, Terry, with, uh, it has to do with the fact that as a guard, he gets to pull, he gets to pull back and block. Uh, using his athletic ability a little more than he does when he's in a stationary position at center. Yeah. Does that make sense? Hey, that's, uh, hey that, that works. That makes a lot of sense to me. Second down and five. Tommy Kramer, one of the all-time gutty kind of guys. You, you ever heard of a guy that's a complete competitor? It's Kramer. Ball at the 40-yard line, three and a half to go. Joe Montana, four touchdowns today. That sweep didn't go anywhere. No. Millard made the tackle. Flagler. Millard swapped over to the left tackle that time, and Cipolo trying to come out and cut it, but penetration by Millard into the backfield. This is, this is what they wanted to accomplish early in the game was to get penetration by the tackles. Even Millard said that today, I'm, 
I may not even play tackle because he's got a separated left shoulder. I may go out and play in. I may do that today. Well, that's one of the few good things that has happened defensively for this 49er team. I mean, the Vikings defensively. 2.45 to go in the ball game. 41-13. Third and a bunch. Mike Sherrard is in the lineup again. Young. Fires at a goal. Oh, Wesley Walls had it go in and out of his hands. And that stops the clock with two and a half to go. Fourth down. Carl Lee standing over there, dejected. Barry Helton on the punt. Lewis waits back at the 10 yard line. Lewis at the 13. Romanowski is down there to make the tackle at the 23 yard line. 41 to 13 with 223 to go, a 35 yard punt. Bring you up today once again. Carlos, a 38 yard field goal. Minnesota led 3 0. But then it all began. 72 yards, Montana to Rice, 7 to 3. Eight yard pass to Brent Jones made it 14 to 3. John Taylor caught the next one to make it 20 to 3. And then to complete the first half scoring, Montana found Rice with his second touchdown pass, 27 to 3 at halftime. And it continued. After Carlos got his second field goal to cut the margin to 27 to 6, Lot 58 yard pass interception return for a touchdown, and then Craig, a four yard touchdown to make it 41 to 6. Rick Finney's TD made it 41 to 13, and that's where we stand right now. Here's Rich Cannon, fires it to Finney, who runs into an, a teammate, and then is knocked down at the 22 yard line. And we've got the two-minute warning coming up. Unless Minnesota can get one more play off, they will not. Two minutes to go. The 49ers will be at home for the NFC Championship game next Sunday. On October 28th, for two tempting hours, Mel Kaiser was on Easy Street. I was behind an armored truck. The rear door popped open, and it was raining money. But instead of keeping it, Mel turned in over $57,000. Well, they call me Mr. Honesty. I've been called worse. To everyday heroes everywhere, we offer our best. Smooth, never bitter Miller beer. I got it. The best comes shining through. Why me? <laughs> Miller. What makes a machine more user-friendly? It should be designed well with controls that are easy to find. It should be dependable and powerful. And it helps if it's a Honda. remaining San Francisco up 41 to 13 the blimp Columbia providing the pictures from up on top based in Carson California piloted by Charles Russell and the home base is Downey California Goodyear built its first blimp 1925 41 to 13 with two minutes remaining in the ball game the 49ers dominating this uh, football game in every possible way. They've gone over 400 yards of total offense, 403. Minnesota has 300 and some, but only one touchdown and two field goals. Gannon will operate out of the shotgun, second down and 12. Yeah. 
Gannon goes left, incomplete. And it's time for the family, Terry. Matt Miller. Saw him in the Pro Bowl last year, and he had off. I believe Matt has three children with him, one, one youngster and a little girl, and saw him in the hotel. This, this guy is one of the toughest, honorish human beings I ever played with. And when he was in that silver and black, he was it was a, a very intimidating thing. But one of the nicest people, just uh, out of that uniform, extremely nice. I want to go back to that shot in just a second. Here's third down because of the comparison with Matt and, and Jim Burke. Here's Gannon going left. Steve Jordan with the catch. And he's down at the 43-yard line, 145 to go, and the, the Vikings will go with a hurry up. There's Matt Millen. And that shot reminded me of the shot of Jim Burke with his son after the Giants won. Well, now the two are teammates. Here's Millen from the Raiders, Jim Burke from the Giants, who was signed in November, and they both have a chance to get another Super Bowl ring, albeit this time on the same team. Gannon going back, running around, and finally tackled at the 34-yard line. 1-18 to go in the ball game. And time has been called now, out on the field. Let's see who called the time. Here's Tom Billy. There's no foul. The illegal chuck, the quarterback was out of the pocket. Jim Burt, who's uh, got a little more work to do, he's out on the field right now at nose tackle. He's the man about whom we were just speaking. Coordinating producer of the NFL on CBS is Charles H. Milton III. Our game today produced by David Michaels, directed by Andy Kindle, associate producer Roy Hamilton, our broadcast associates Peter Shakur and John Coleman'sberger. He's second down. Here's Gannon back. That pass caught by Jim Gustafson, and he's down at the 43 with another first down. The NFL today was produced by David Winter and directed by Kathy Barreto, the executive producer of CBS Sports is Ted Shaker. 40 seconds remaining in the ball game. 35 seconds now, first down Minnesota, and Rich Gannon drops back and goes deep. Hit, incomplete at the goal line. 24 seconds to go, Leo Lewis, the intended receiver. I want to thank our crew up in the booth too, Dave Yagi on stats again. Spotters Joe Cash and Nancy Lundquist. And our replay coordinator down in the truck was Bobby Monsbach. Takes a heck of a bunch of folks to put on something like this. And it's been a joy to work with everybody. Jerry Burns, last game of the year. Boy, there's a finality to the playoffs, Terry, isn't it? When, when you guys didn't lose that many, but when you lose, it's just suddenly it's over. Yeah, there's, there's nothing left. There's no game next week there. Yeah, it's just cold turkey. This game here takes you right out of it. That's one of the things that Gannon, one of the things that Siebert was telling us that this game is, when this game's over with, you know, it's over. We don't have a, you know, if we get to next week, we've got, if we lose that one, well, at least we're coaching in the, uh, in the Pro Bowl, you know. We got one more game to kind of get the loss out of our system, but he said the first game of the playoff is a game where you experience it's just cold turkey, and he said, I'm as uptight and as nervous as I've ever been in my life, but he's in a new position. That's head coach. There have been very few sports teams in America oh, 69 offense. Second half. who have won back-to-back -back world championships under different coaches. And the 49ers have a chance to do that now. Bill Walsh, of course, the head coach last year, and George Siebert. I keep thinking back to when you and I first talked to him in the week three of the season. And he said, my charge this year is to keep this thing going, to not screw it up. I'd well, certainly say he's accomplished that. I think he's done an excellent job. I don't know, excellent. He's done an outstanding job. Second down, 16 seconds remaining. <laughs> Offside, 49ers. Leo Lewis, the pass is incomplete. 10 seconds to go. Well, who do you like? Who do you like these 49ers? Who will give them the best game? Giants, Rams, your, your opinion. Just pick one? Yeah, sure. Go out on a limb. Make Ram a stand. Rams. 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 Rams play them well. Rams know All them well. Side. 67 defense. Second down. Rams beat 
beat these 49ers here and then had them beat up in uh, Anaheim and let them come back and John Taylor took it away from him. I, I have to agree with you. I believe the Rams match up better with the 49ers and probably any team primarily because they have the offense is very much the equal of this 49er offense. It can really attack and strike and that seems to be the one type of team that gives a team like the 49ers fits. Could be the final play of the ball game. Gannon goes right and the pass is caught by Steve Jordan, the tight end. That is his ninth catch today. It's over. Joe Montana with four touchdown passes in the first half. And for Jerry Burns, a bitter defeat. Second year in a row. The season has come to a close here at Candlestick for the Minnesota Vikings. And anticlimactically, I think they're going to put two seconds back on the clock. And that means they've got to clear it. This is kind of unnecessary. Well, they all go ahead and just run the second clock. Time out. Minnesota. They've got to clear the entire field again from players, journalists, photographers. So they can run one more play. And now folks are scattering on the respective sidelines. Well, you got a young quarterback. <laughs> he wants one more You chance. can't blame him. He hasn't played. Oh, he's oh, the guy with all the potential. He calls timeout. Gannon we're talking about. And he says, I'm going to put this baby in the end zone. I know I didn't. He's, I didn't mean to mess all this up, but I'm going to get myself one more shot. So go get him, big guy. This will be the final play. Complete and now it's official. Intended for Herschel Walker, the 49ers win it 41 to 13. David Huffman talking with Joe Montana. Hundred forty-one yards for Montana. Let's go to Randy Cross. Go, Joe. You played about as perfect a game in the playoffs as people have seen in a while. Seventeen to twenty-four, four touchdowns. What made it work? Well, I think the big key here is, is you got to give all the credit to the offensive line. You know, they had a lot of pressure on them coming in, and these guys have been getting a lot of sacks, and they just gave me the time to throw the ball, and that's the big key. When you can throw the ball, we got some guys that can catch it. You've got two teams next week. You've both played them. Which one's the toughest for you? Do you think? Well, I think the toughest one is, is, is uh, it's kind of hard to say. You know, both of them have played us tough. The Rams see us a lot more, and, uh, you know, they've given us a couple good games, and, you know, uh, the Giants are ready for a little bit of revenge, too, from the last time we played. So both of them are going to be a, a good challenge for us. All right, thanks, Joe. All right, thanks. Back to you, Vern. All right, Randy. I bet Joe uh, didn't recognize Randy Cross standing up. Our final score, 41-13. to 13. Coming up next, the NFL Today Play.